All right, so the Rays open today. Who I don't even know who they're playing. Anybody know? Who are they playing? I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. This, this is not good. So out of all of us, me, Fester, Froggy, and Roxanne, nobody in the room knows who the Rays are playing for I, opening. Oh, wait a minute. Hands are no, going no, no, up. No, no. I yeah. saw a billboard. Yes. I saw a billboard. I thought it was the Toronto logo. Yes. Are they playing Toronto? Yes, they're playing the Toronto Blue Jays. I, I, said, I was going to say, I don't know who they're playing today, but I know we're giving away tickets on Q105 for them to play the Toronto Blue Jays. Okay. Well, there you have it. So, Well, hold on. But, but I don't they think, are playing the Blue Jays today. I, I, when were we giving away tickets? Not us. Rico at night. No, no, not we. I'm saying we as a collective radio like, station. Like last yes, week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When, when, today. Wait a minute, we're giving away tickets today? To see Sunday. I think it's Sunday. Oh, not game. today's game. Yeah. No, All that's right. what All I'm right. saying. I was, I, yes. I, yeah. I was they just usually, saying. I, think, I think baseball does it in series. Yeah, they, yeah. they play several games oh, in oh, a oh. row. So they play the Blue Jays today, tomorrow, Saturday, maybe Sunday. Yeah, something, so something you like can that. win a pair of tickets as the Toronto Blue Jays and Rays play Sunday, March 31st. We have a night guy named Rico here? Wow. We do? Interesting. Never met him. Sunday, March 31st. Wait a minute. So yeah. today is opening day. How many days are the Toronto Blue Jays in town? Well, you're, they're usually. What are they going to Fort DeSoto hanging out it, for a couple no. of days? Where are they, yeah. they going to go uh, manatee watching down at the power plant? Yeah. You know, They do play in Dunedin, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. First of all, that's right. They do spring train oh, right around the corner. That is true. So okay. I, all right. I bet you they probably haven't even been to Toronto yet. Uh,. You, I guess they have. They Why? Can, no, they, not necessarily. Spring training was up until last week. You don't think they they were back? All right, we're going to go all the way to Canada just to freeze our ass off for two days, and we're going exactly back uh, to where we came from. Maybe. Anyway, so Rays, Major League Baseball, opening day, today for the Rays at the uh, the flop, I mean the trop. And listen, I I want to see the Rays stay in town. I've been very, very clear about this. Uh, the Rays must remain in town I just am not a huge fan of where they're going to build the new complex. I think part of the problem with the Rays is the location yeah, and the need to draw a whole lot of people for a whole lot of games. I mean, the typical, what, the season is 162. First of all, the Major League Baseball season is way too long. There are far too many games. Hey, Andrew, what is it, 162? Is that correct? 162 games. So you split that in the half. You got half the games here. It's just, it's too many total games. And as far as location goes, let me be very clear. I want the Rays to stay in Tampa yeah. Bay. It's always great to have major league team. You know, the only thing we're missing is NBA. I don't know if we'll ever get an NBA team. No. You know, you got the uh, Orlando Magic, you know, hour and twenty minutes down the road. There's a story that Tampa balked when the Magic was going to be developed. And they balked on a team, or they didn't build an arena, or something like that. And Orlando just snapped it up. We're never getting an NBA team. Yeah, it might be too close. Who knows? Anyway, so I support the Rays staying in Tampa Bay, and I support the Rays staying in St. Petersburg. Uh, I thought that the Derby Field area would be a great compromise because it is so much closer to a major population base like Tampa, Hillsborough County. The problem is you can put the <laughs> nicest thing down in downtown St. Pete, but if if it's a hassle to get to for a lo- very large potential uh, spectatorship, that that's a problem. You know the old location, location, location? Yeah, it's a problem. Location, location, location is a problem. Now, is downtown St. Pete and the redevelopment uh, and some of the – the, do I support some of that? Yes, okay. I just I just don't think that a major league baseball park ought to be part of that. All right, go Rays. Oh, well, no, but, but, <laughs> but, I didn't think we get into a dissertation but, but, on stadium location first Rays, thing out of the gate. Rays, stay in St. Petersburg. Okay. Stay here, Derby. Why, why like the Derby Lane deal right behind us over here? Why why can't they grab that land? Where would I play poker? Well, you have a poker a poker room built in as well. Dude, I don't know. If they had a poker room overlooking center field. That'd be awesome. Well, you go to Hard Rock and play your poker, whatever you know. So, uh, I, I support the Rays. It's just I think that you're going to put a really, really nice facility uh, where the trop essentially is now. That ultimately, 
a lot of people are still not going to go to because it's just it's not convenient to get to for a lot of people in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah, to elaborate on that, why do you want to go to Wrigley Field? Because the vibe, because of the crowd, the people there, the history. Same thing with Yankee Stadium. And you because the Blues other- Brothers gave that as an address. Well, that would That's, be your reason. That is why I want to go to Wrigley Field. Okay. But there's no vibe at Tropicana Field because there aren't enough people there to create one. Froggy, what's your hot take on stadium locations? Stadiums are stupid. Aren't they, though? <laughs> stadiums are stupid. That's a bumper sticker right there. Yep. Stadiums are stupid. Hey, Froggy. What? Hal Herman is booked tomorrow, correct? Yeah. I mean, you better start booking him soon because... I think his contract ends in six months, so okay. you're going to be hiring Sal Sherman uh, to be fine. doing news. That's fine with me. Somebody else. Yep. All right. So Hal's, out. Hal's going to be out soon. Sal. All right. Well, listen, we've had some good time with Hal. And listen, Sal Sherman. Uh, as you know, all good things must come to an end. It happens. You so, know, yeah, I mean, things. we'll we'll throw a little going away party for uh, for Hal and Froggy okay. and whoever. Uh, listen. That would hey, be nice. Maybe a cake. You know, th- hey, we got the cake, girl. Yeah, uh, make, make how going going away cake. Uh, so you're already dropping the little uh, things that you're going to be leaving the show in six months when your contract's up? Did I say me? I said how. Hal. Hal's oh, oh, contract. Listen, how? I, how? I, I, I get the veiled reference. How? What? <laughs> There's no veil. I don't even know. What, what am I, a nun? I, I get the veiled reference. No, and bride. Yeah, bride. I don't wear a <laughs> right, so, Oh, yeah. What am I, a bride? I, Brides so, wear so, Froggy, what are you saying? In six months when your contract expires, you're not going to renew or what? That's just what Hal told me oh, that right. I should do. He's giving me counsel. Oh, oh. So well, his agent now. Uh, Hal Herman is giving you counsel. <laughs> he says uh, they take advantage of you there. Or well, he says like this: they take advantage of you, Larry. You should really do something about it. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Hal? You're right. Oh, boy. you're right. So Froggy is already setting up contentious contract negotiations with the Beasley boys. Is that it? We learn from the best. Six oh seven at the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> Just getting rolling, man. We got a loaded Thursday show. We're back in minutes. First, Pat got traffic. Well, tomorrow might be good.
18 Thursday morning. Hey, everybody. MJ here with Fester, Roxanne, Froggy. Hey, Froggy, if you don't mind, I'd like to just delve a little further. And listen, what? I, well, because it seems you're indicating that. Oh, my God. It was a joke. Look at you. You're I, all I, butt hurt. I, no, I'm not. Listen, there was a Froggy one. A lot of people don't realize. You say this were... crap all the time. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Froggy one was insignificant to the show. He was on the show for four years. Uh, froggy one. Then, of course, uh, Froggy one left. And then you became Froggy because I didn't want to give up the name because uh, Froggy is just a great radio name. Yeah, it's smart. So you're Froggy number two. Yeah, so Froggy just, number two. He's been on the show for 21 I, I, years. I, so your intention is... To try to come to terms when your contract expires in about six months. Hey, MJ, I have to jump in and say this is your game you play, yeah, isn't it? You, you talk this, contract this is, stuff yeah. all the time. It's this not, is right up your alley. You I talk just made contract, a little, contract, contract. It's not a game I play. I'm it's just little, I'm telling the audience the truth that my contract was up at the end of last year. I still haven't signed it. I actually I just got the the final draft of the new contract. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, and I just got to review that. I mean, I, I, I didn't walk out. It's not like, hey, I don't have a new contract, so I'm not coming to work. No, I came to work every day. You know, it's called in good faith. So, look, Frog, I, I need to move on here, but do you intend to try to stay with the show when your contract is up in, I think, October? Oh, my goodness. Out of Fester, what do you think? Do you th- do you intend? It's, it's a it's a mid-level priority. Oh, look at that. It's a mid-level priority. Can it real? Yeah. All of us. I think me, Roxy, and Infestors come a, up with this. A, this job is a mid-level priority. All right, it's so, important. I show up every day. I give my best effort. All right, so are Froggy and Fester both leaving the show? Wait a minute. Roxy, are you coming with? I'm <laughs> telling you this show is a mid-level. Did you get prep for me last night? I did not. And you, know I was, you know why? You know why? Oh, because it's, it's a mid-level, mid-level priority. priority. Gotcha. <laughs> mid-level priority. <laughs> yeah, I, I got no pr- Why you, didn't I get... Doesn't matter why. Doesn't matter why. You, I, are, you are owed no explanation. You get, <laughs> you get, you get prep about 80% of the time. Which is higher than where I would place most mid-level well, priorities. I get prep from Froggy zero percent of the okay. time. We're, we're all I don't do prep. Everybody, yeah. listen, he, he provides something unique that I can't. See, I think we're banding together like the friends. Listen, all of them. No from day one, yeah. this has been a mid-level priority since day one. Yeah, since day one. Since day one. Uh, listen, I give my best effort when I'm here. If it goes away tomorrow, meh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's mid-level fester. Yeah. Listen, if, it, if it goes away tomorrow, great. Fine. Or in six away, months. If it goes away in six months, if it goes away in ten years, it's fine. I, I, I'm ten years. Holy I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm emotionally unattached. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for answering me. Yeah. You can be my counsel as well. Hmm. Uh, we got to get into this later on. Britney Spears <laughs> wants to be open about her struggles, but she says that they're too offensive to share. What does that mean? Now I gotta know. Yeah, Britney Spears says she wants to be open about her struggles, but they're too offensive to share. We'll get into that. And I'll tell you what, the stuff on P. Diddy or Sean Mm. Diddy Combs, whatever the hell you call the guy, everybody's coming out of the woodwork. Everyone is now, you know what it's like? And I even saw a story to this effect that, it appears that now people are piling on to so-called finally take Diddy down. You know what a crazy indication of how insane this is? Froggy, give me a last six months of your radio career indication of how crazy this has gotten. At Rolling Loud a couple months ago. It's a concert. If you were in the know, you would know. I was going to say, what the hell is Rolling Loud? It's a concert where a bunch of people perform and uh, Kanye West was there and Diddy tried to meet up with Kanye West and Kanye, even Kanye West was like, no way, staying away from that guy. Blew him off. Read the story this morning. Didn't send it to you. Kanye West, (laughs) if you Google nutjob certifiable out of his mind crazy crotch and Kanye's picture comes up. He's calling P. Diddy out? He say he he blew him off. P. Diddy wanted to meet up with him for some reason at the concert. And he's like, no way, dude. I'm staying away from that guy. And that's Kanye. Craziest person we know. Yeah, Kanye doesn't want to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, old Justin Bieber stories uh, rising again. Aww. Yep. Uh, there's, a, I guess, a correspondent for Extra. You know, the the entertainment show. Extra, Extra. Yeah, she's coming out of the... Just a lot of folks. Who's that the guy, um, Torre? I read something... Joe Torre? 
No, no, no. <laughs> to- Torre. You know what I'm talking about? T O U R E. Uh, I I do not. What I was his? Cl- Where did he come from? Where did Torre? What was his claim to fame? Where did he come from? I've never I will, heard of him. Yeah, I will know. Realize, oh, come so. on! You never heard of Torre? No. The journalist. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, journalist. Uh, Torre is an American writer, music journalist, cultural critic, podcaster, and television personality. Sounds like he's unemployed. He go back to where you were, dude. I'm reading, and you're turning pages. This guy here. has one name. He yeah. was a co-host of the TV show The Cycle on MSNBC. He was also a contributor to MSNBC's Dylan Radigan show. Who the hell is that? Oh, the Dylan Radigan show. Is our, and Friday was our favorite. I love the DR, man. Yes. Oh. The host of Fuse's Hip Hop Shop. Anyway, Torre, he was interviewed... And I read a story about him. He's coming out of the woodwork as well. So just a lot of folks are essentially piling on all of these Sean Diddy Combs' uh, issues right now. So we'll get I, into that. I have a friend who texted me, and he's like, Roxanne, I have so much to tell you about this. And I couldn't talk to him yesterday, but he has an attorney friend, and he's going to tell me some stuff. And he's like, it's so much deeper than you could ever imagine. Well, hang on a minute. Yeah. Why well, haven't you told us this in the past? What are you talking about? You have a friend that's friends with Diddy? No, I never said that. You, hold on. You just said that you have a friend no. that is saying that it's so much deeper. How, yes. She so said yes. a friend that's in the know. So I ha- said a friend that's in the know. I didn't say he was friends with Diddy. All right. So how do you have a friend? That, what is the in the know that your friend has? I don't know. I just told you. He texted me. that All I have to tell you today is that it's so much deeper than what we're seeing and reading about right now that's being covered. There's a lot more to this story that doesn't look good yes. for Diddy and potentially many other people so your so, friend yeah has knowledge mm-hmm. of much deeper diddy indiscretions and yes. he's going to share those with you yeah he's going to share them with me now how does your Ooh, wait, wait, what let's am wire I, you <laughs> how does your friend have this knowledge i don't I, i'm not going to tell you all the details of how he has a knowledge i'm just telling you he he has <laughs> A friend. She has an insight. I have an insight. She has an insight. Exactly. Exactly. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What is your friend's occupation? Don't tell that him. he. Frog, you I, shut up. I'm, I'm literally not going to tell you anything more. If this friend gives me information about this, I'll share that information. This could be hearsay. This is her friend but, uh-huh. is a part time mover, part time shaker. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Two gigs. Listen, I'm being Part time lover. What is not your mine, but... What does your friend do for a living? None of oh, give that's me where a, he works. Give none, me a, he works at none, none of your business. <laughs> none yo, oh. yes, he's the CEO of <laughs> Nunya Industries. Nunya <laughs> Industries is that publicly traded? Not yet. <laughs> All right, Roxanne, why can't you tell me what I'm your friend does? I'm not being cagey. I'm being. You I'm are be- being cagey. No, here's the deal. Hey, hey, friend. Thanks for thanks for wanting to talk to me about this. Let me go tell my listening audience about you and your business. No, that's not how Makes it works. Makes no sense, MJ. It, as professional journalists, which we are, believe it or not, which I don't, uh, <laughs> Roxanne can't give up her sources. You're being exactly. totally cagey. You're being the opposite of a cage-free chicken laying eggs. MJ, let's let's All talk right? about let's talk about you know <laughs> when we ask you names of people that you don't want to disclose. I can't say who. I can't say who. I can't say. I heard from from a very reliable source. You know what? You're being Nicholas Cagey this morning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're being. So, uh, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, you don't tell us everything. Like who? Who? Uh, who did you asking, go to lunch with yesterday? I'm asking a basic little question your friend Roxanne yeah. that claims to have all of this knowledge and yeah. in the know on all kinds of uh, toe curling new P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs information I don't think that's a stretch, I don't think that's an invasion of your privacy Nick. to ask what is he, is he in the entertainment business, is he a garbage truck salesman uh, that's a good business, yeah, you are losing the forest for hey, the trees, yeah. by, by the way we yeah. We know people that are in the garbage truck sales business. Yeah. They are and uh, they, they're doing just, just fine. fine. They're loaded with garbage, man. They're loaded with trash. They're making surgeon money. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so why is it so difficult if I'm asking, hey, what does this guy do? That you know he why? Because he's a good friend. Yes. He's That's why. He's in the know. The know he's in.
He's a good friend, so I don't just talk about him on air. Look, he's not even a good friend. He's a source. Yes. Okay. All right. So when are you going to speak to this friend to see if you're going to be able to pass along maybe some new exclusive inside mm-hmm. information on the whole Diddy issue? I, I mean, if I have time today... Uh, in between the myriad of other things I have to do, then, then and he has time, then we'll catch up. Why don't you text him and see if he'll come on the air? Uh, that oh will never boy. happen. I would not. Ne- uh, let me let me reiterate. He is a dear friend. Do you think I would ever bring him on the show? No. Whoa! <laughs> me, I feel the same way about Big Lou. Yeah. See, Roxanne, yeah. her her first line of defense is to hold back any possible content on the show. So no, uh, no, no I'm very giving true. with my content. Very giving. Very generous. She's a giver. Ask your friend if they'll come on. If I, I would, he's not like that. We'll let them uh, disguise uh, their name. We, we can even disguise their voice if they want. You'll give them a voice box. Hello. I am Roxanne's secret Hello. informant. My name is Roxanne's friend. I, I know all things about P. Diddy. <laughs> Let's put him in a shadow. <laughs> Blur oh. him out. MJ, how dumb are you? Of all things to say, can we have him on the show? What an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's like in a, like a blacked out room. And he's like, you, you, you slow his voice down. What, what, he sounds like oh, yeah, what am I thinking? Uh, Roxanne potentially has somebody with exclusive information. Of course she'll never bring them on the show. I can get right. John Davidson on. 6.30 at the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a humongous pile of early morons in the news next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. I don't want you to have a crappy mo-
Uh, here we go, 6.39 at the MJ Morning Show. You want to hear a moron who happens to be an absolutely horrific grandson? Oh, my God. Hey, Froggy, what kind of grandson are you? Oh, I'm a, I'm an amazing grandson. What's the status of your grandparents? Uh, all mine are gone. My... Well, all mine are buried in the ground. Oh, uh, really? Sa- same for same for you? Yes, I miss them all. Yeah, I, so do I. I mean, all my grandmother my... lived with me for well, all through my childhood. Aww. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, little nanny. Yeah, all of my grandparents. The last of my grandparents passed away. I think it was like 2002. I think was the the mm-hmm. last of uh, so it's been you know over twenty years you know, that my grandparents listen to this this is at a uh, Mobile Alabama the Mobile Police Department has arrested a suspect 
for allegedly entering his grandmother's vehicle unlawfully and putting combustible material in her gas tank. We we are trying to blow mm-hmm. grandma up? Combustible material like what? Officers responded to the 5,000 block of blah, blah, blah earlier this week in reference to a domestic incident. Police said they discovered the victim's grandson had entered her vehicle, removed property, and attempted to ignite it by putting combustible material in the gas tank. Nobody was injured in the incident, and police took uh, Clifton Whitfield, 26 into custody and charged him with unlawful breaking and entering and making a terroristic threat. I wonder if he's going to end up on like the terrorist watch list now. I mean, what happens with you and grandma that you want to blow up grandma's car? I I don't know if he he wanted grandma to be in the car, but what what the hell happens where you want to Blow up grandma. Isn't grandma the one person everybody loves? I never Unless wanted she's to... a real bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't know. I she never... could have been real mean. I never wanted uh... to blow up grandma. I never wanted to hurt any of my grandparents. My grandma Minky. My grandma Franny. They were lovely grandparents. I never wanted to hurt them and blow up their vehicles. Mm. No. Yeah, anyway. Hey, where's Fester? I don't know. Any what? idea? I bet you anything, he's been sleeping on that. I bet you, you want me to go see if he's asleep asleep on the couch? I bet. Hey, Andrew, can you see if Fester is napping? What is up with him? He's by the pool table. Let me me point out. I bet you he's snoozing. But let me point out the yawning. Have you noticed, guys, I'm not like making fun of him. I'm just speaking honestly. Have you noticed the amount of yawning that he's been doing on the show? I've been mentioning this now for months. And I don't think it's normal. During the show, he will yawn like 30 times. I'll look at him. He's yawning. I'll look again in five minutes. He's yawning. I'll glance across the microphones here. He's yawning. He's a tired guy. Uh, Andrew's yeah. coming back now. Oh, here goes Fed. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Uh, yawning is contagious. Dude, we, all, we know that, too. Were you sleeping? I'm not even sleeping. Oh, please stop it. <laughs> I, stop it. I see so you're walking in with coffee. Yeah. You're looking at the clock. Ugh, I overslept it. Hold on. Did you really <laughs> take a nap during the break? I take a nap during every break. Yes, you're back there on the couch. I take a nap during every break. Sometimes in the office, sometimes on the couch. We need a couch in the office, by yeah. the way. <laughs> We are just a nice. I don't know how nice that couch is that you sleep on. You know what? I, I don't. You don't think, even care. I don't think it's that nice either. However, MJ, we seriously need to talk about an office sponsor to provide a couch for our office, maybe even a recliner. Dude, all you have to do is drive the roads of Tampa Bay, and the furniture dumping is all over the place. Yeah, but it rained last night, so any of them will be wet right you now. Just dry them out. Seriously, folks. <laughs> just dry if, them out. <laughs> hey, li- listen, I'm not kidding around. If you want to furnish like a rental property, yeah. if let's say you're in the Airbnb business and you got some rental properties that you got on Airbnb and you need to furnish them, all you have to do is dedicate a couple of hours during, I would say, a three to four day stretch. Drive around the Tampa Bay area. People are dumping beds, bedroom sets, couches, coffee tables. I see furniture dumping all the time. Yeah, I see it all everywhere. All kinds of good stuff. Yes. Do it. Yeah. So here's the deal. Why don't you, as you drive around, when you see a couch dumped, just pick the damn thing up, bring it into the office. There's your couch. I'll get zero res out to do the upholstery cleaning. Oh, they'd make it look like new. Oh, well, not only that. I mean, there could be all kinds of... No, leave the bugs in it. Well, could be bed bugs, could be whatever. You know, maybe there's like methamphetamine uh, meth lab residue on the couch. Hey, we'll get Zero Res out here. Zero Res is a longtime great sponsor of the show. Zero Res Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. They also do upholstery. You know, they use the Zero Res uh, amazing patented process on the carpet and any upholstery. So uh, I'll have them come out and clean the couch that you find on the side of the road. Or we can get an office sponsor. <laughs> like what, Levitt's. What what 
Levitt's furniture. Levitt's furniture <laughs> went out of business in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> you love it at Levitt's. <laughs> Remember, the, there was a Levitt's across from our old radio station. To, to this day. When it, oh, my. It, the U, Folks, the U-Haul yeah. at Gandhi and Dale Mabry, the huge U-Haul, right when you dump out off of the Selman uh, Crosstown onto Gandhi, or if you take the flyover, it's you know down below now. But you see the huge U-Haul sign that used to be Levitt's Furniture. Hold on, Fester just brought up the Levitt's Wikipedia entry. Hang on, uh, just click on we'll click on that. All right. So uh, Levitt's Furniture was a what? nationwide chain of American furniture stores that helped create the furniture warehouse genre of retail furniture sales. It was in business for nearly a hundred years yeah. before liquidating uh, in bankruptcy in early 2008. But the Levitts on Gandhi in South Tampa that was a big showroom and distribution center. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that was gone well before 2008. So anytime somebody says, "Oh, I'm getting a couch," or "Just got some new furniture," or, "I'm getting a mattress," like, "Oh, did you get it at Levitts?" and Remember just, the jingle? You love it at Levitt's. It's great. I love it. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the family that owned Levitt's, they might have started Rooms to Go, if I'm not mistaken. Never heard of it. They're, you never heard of Rooms to Go? The Levitt's? <laughs> no, seriously. Fester, look up Rooms to Go, and I think that the Levitt's family, I think that they were, or those involved in Levitt's, I think started Rooms to Go. Do you remember the Rooms to Go jingle? Chief Operators includes Levitt's. Yeah. Oh, c- competitors, competitors, oh, oh, competitors. Oh, dude, can, I'm, I'm, re- I'm, reading, I'm, reading, read? I'm reading here. I'm reading hot here. Uh, anyway, so do, do I know the Rooms to Go jingle? There's a new way to service so easy to do. Ooh. We put it all together and deliver for you. We nice? make it so easy. We mail it. Did you write that? <laughs> At Rooms to Go. Oh, is that the one? It's is the that? very low price. Is it? Hold on, no, no. no, no. How, how do you know all those hold, words? Hold That's it, I think he's reading it off of his no, phone. No, I'm not. I'm looking but at a video of a... Uh, didn't it end with, like, wife. decorating is easy yet? Mm-hmm. Rooms to Go. Right? Was that the same It's about jingle? family. It's about... Something for yeah. rooms to hey maybe like there's like a area manager of rooms to go that can like give us a couch from like the Sofia Vergara collection oh, or something that would for the be office nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. we like a seven foot no couch. I want a Cindy Crawford oh, you did, maybe a Cindy well, Crawford hey maybe you got a couch that's damaged and the whole back is shredded we don't even need we that nice we don't care because yeah. that's gonna go against the wall right and you're saying you all you want this so you can nap on it yes oh, okay. The sole reason I want it is so I can take naps during commercial breaks. <laughs> Fester takes six and seven minute naps. Power naps. During the but I also mentioned that you're yawning a lot. And don't take offense to this. You never used to I, oh, I, stop I, it. Why'd you have to I'd stop at the phony yawning now. Listen. But but seriously, I'm being serious. You've never yawned like you're yawning now. And I'm is that a health issue? I'm or, yawning. Uh, <laughs> guys, it's I, it's I, contagious. Really, I like the rock. What's happening? Yawning. I have a really ooh. Big, big jaw, jaw drop in my yawn. Fester, I'm serious. <laughs> you are yawning like 30 times a day. I look at you constantly ah. and you're yawning, but you never did that. Is there a reason why? I'm being serious. I'm not making a joke out of this. Ask your body. Body. Yeah. Hello, body. Uh, Fester, is, I don't ask know. why you yawn. I've uh, I've replaced one solid night of sleep mm-hmm. with like, you know, two or three really short periods of sleep. That's what I do, too. Yeah, and I think it has a cumulative right. effect on yeah. overall tiredness. At right, 649 at the MJ Morning Show, we uh, chewed up a little bit of our morons of the news time, so I'll have to sprinkle some in later on if anybody the from Rooms to Go or, 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 or... We have friends over at Buddy's Home Furnishings. Can- Canes. 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 Can- Canes. Canes. Canes, Canes, Canes. Yeah. Canes is a big advertiser on How the show. How about that store Siemens? See, Siemens first. They're out of business, oh, too. Oh, damn it. Siemens and yeah. Canes. And- oh, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. No, I think maybe Siemens... C- Maybe the Siemens folks started rooms to go. <laughs> All things being equal, I don't want a Siemens couch. All right. <laughs> I mean, just want to put that out there. I'll gladly take a Levin's couch from the 1980s what kind before of a, I'll take a Siemens what, couch. What, what kind of activity happened on that couch? Oh. The Siemens couch. I take it back. I don't want a couch after all. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and Canes, Canes is, I just heard a Canes commercial already this morning. Yeah. 
So, canes, canes, canes. Hey, dude, anybody from Leaders? I'll take outdoor furniture <laughs> take, in our office to sleep uh, on. 6.50 at the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> 7 o'clock hour is straight ahead. I've got a little quiz for you guys when we get Ooh. back. I've got, I need you to kind of fill in the blank, and we'll see who can get it when we get back in minutes. I've got email we need to go over. Uh, so, nobody won Powerball last night. Of course, there was a Mega Millions winner. Oh, you want to hear about the the Powerball? I'm sorry, the Mega Million screw job. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a Mega Million screw job that Boy, I. Is oh it? man, hang on. We'll tell you all this next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. If you don't have a Plan B for your air conditioning, I got your Plan B right here. Your.
Q105. Hey, folks, MJ here with Festa, Roxanne, Froggy702, rolling up on 703 on a Thursday morning. And I got a little bit of a, a little quiz, just kind of impromptu here. And let me see if you can finish this uh, particular sentence. It can be yours if anybody. Complete this sentence. It's wide open. Roxanne, Fester, Froggy. Hey, Andrew, if you want to get in on the action, I brought up your microphone in the little production cubicle. Wow. All right, here wow. we go. <laughs> wow, you really think we're not going to get it. Yeah. Um, it can be yours if... It fits your big butt. What? It fits your big butt. It can be yours. You can you can have these pants. We're, we're if, just talking about couches. Yeah, yeah. It can be yours if it fits your fat ass. Yes. No. Um, let's listen to my inflection. I'm giving you guys sort of a clue. It can be yours if. Well, okay. Of course. I know the I know the answer. Me answer too. Now. Because earlier in the week we were talking about contingency plans that this yeah. show has for right. people who pee on stage. Blow dryers. Is, is that like the Price is Right announcer? Yes. It can be yours if the Price is Right. Andrew? Hello? Andrew? Are people, yes. are people calling in? <laughs> the, fo- <laughs> the, f- the phones are ringing. You, know, you put Andrew's <laughs> mic up, you hear the phone ring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, uh, if, it could be yours if the price is right. That would be correct! Yes! Now, the second part of the quiz is what can be yours if the price is right? Well, I could. 2008 Saturn? I mean, what? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good car, by the way. Uh, Come on. What What could be yours if the price is right? Something for sale that I don't know about? Yes. I don't know. Hmm. Is it something like that's being auctioned? Is it it movie props? Mm, Nope. I heard on NPR that there's a large movie prop auction going on right now. All right, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Is it a piece of property? It is. Ooh. It is. Like acreage? Whose property? Hmm. <gasps> I could buy a piece of the Yellowstone Ranch? No, no. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, right? I mean, we're looking at Wyoming property. No, 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 no. Think about this. What? If it's Price is Right related, this guy's oh. house could be yours if the price is right. Bob Barker's. Yes! Oh, oh I wouldn't want to live at his. I want to live at Ron, Ronnie's house. <laughs> Fester, come on down. He's not alive, right? He, he died last Roxanne, year. come on down. Froggy, come He's on gone. down. You could be the owner of Bob Barker's estate if the price is right. Yeah, so Bob Barker's historic estate. That doesn't seem like a lot of money. He was in this place for 50 years. Bob Barker's house for 15 years. 50 or 15? 50. 50 five, oh, zero. You said both numbers. That's I, why no, I, I didn't. Okay. 50 years. Did I say that? I don't you think did. I did. Second time you said 15. All right, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't. I mean, you know. Bob it's Barker's it's, it's, historic Los Angeles estate is on the market for $2,988,000. Why don't you buy it? We all could go out there and do oh, an L.A. show. Man, can you imagine using Bob Barker's toilet? Ugh, it probably smells like mothballs. <laughs> oh, my God. You use Bob Barker's bedroom? Probably has a bidet. <laughs> probably does. Keep that Bob Barker bottom clean. You know what we He's ought to do? He's probably got like a big, like wheel that you spin in the house. Probably is our sex room, too. Yeah, yeah right. but instead of numbers that's, and that, prices, it's no, got, like, sex positions. No, what that, are we going to no. do tonight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Spin the wheel. wheel. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, it's the toilet paper roll is on the big wheel. In the bathroom. Or, you know what they ought to do? Let me tell you what they should do. Is, to get rid of the house, they ought to do, like, the mountain climber game. That's what they ought to do. They ought to turn this thing into like a bidding game. All right, so I have a serious question. Yeah, yes. Is this going to be a knockdown house, like a legendary Hollywood house that somebody's going to buy just to knock it down? Well, whose house did they recently Betty sell? White's. That's right. Betty White's house in Beverly Hills or Bel Air, wherever it was, it was a knockdown because the land was worth more than the actual structure, and somebody bought Betty White's house after she passed away at... Ninety nine point nine. She didn't even make it to a hundred because she got jinxed by People Magazine <laughs> with their big cover. One hundred years for Betty White, and she died like two weeks before she turned a hundred. 
What kind of style is this? Is this like a Spanish? Yeah, it's like a Spanish mission, uh, like a Mexican yeah mission. Oh, uh, mission style. house. It looks like it almost looks like the uh, the Alamo, but really fancy with a nice built-in pool. It's got like a Southwest, yeah. you know, Mexican kind of feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. And so Bob Barker's place is uh, up for grabs. Well, yeah, you know, Bob Barker died. Froggy, did you think Bob Barker died a long time ago? Uh. I asked if he was still alive, and I had to think about it, but I remember he passed in the last year or so. Bob Barker died just back in August at 99 years old. He's in the 99 Club along with Betty White. His house is about to be in the Knockdown Club. Yeah, it's up in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, they call it, here's the actual description of the type of architecture that it is. It is called, we were kind of, you know, in the right area. It's called Spanish Colonial Revival. Okay. Is what it is. But the Bob Barker's home could be yours if the price is right. $2,988,000. i trying to think, what game would be best? Like Plinko? Oh, you put Bob Barker's house in the middle, you know, the Plinko thing for like the ten grand. Yeah, if you yeah. land on it, you win Bob Barker. You, are you saying they should exactly. give away the yes. house as a prize on yes. the show? Yes, they ought to. The price is right. On, oh, my God. Hey, Drew Carey, get off your your ass and bring this to the table. The Plinko game, they buy Bob Barker's house, and then they put Bob Barker's house in the middle Plinko because the biggest prize is right in the middle, right? Yeah. When you drop the, the puck. Right in the center. Yeah. And, yeah the, so you instead of the $10,000 prize or whatever the big number is in Plinko, you put Bob Barker's house in there. The pictures they offer online kind of suck. They don't show the Bob Barker boom boom room. <laughs> I mean, here's some very dated well, bathrooms. Well, listen, you talk about Bob Barker and Boom Boom. You know, for years, <laughs> there were plenty of allegations of Bob, uh, you know, diddling some of the the hot models. Or weren't there some hot models that claimed, like, sexual harassment? Yeah, he got out just in time. <laughs> I mean, he was like, you know, five years before well, everything got really heavy. Well, no, I think. He, got, he retired in 07. Yeah, probably. Oh, was it 07? Yeah. Yeah, so, hey, you're about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bob Barker, hey, go to Google Fester. Type in Bob Barker. Bob Barker. Sexual harassment. Sexual allegations. Harassment. Just And also Google diddling, because I haven't heard, heard that word in <laughs> <laughs> ages. Since your grandmother yeah. tried to explain it to you. <laughs> yeah. Don't let him diddle with you. Roxanne. I guess when you're talking about Bob, that's the word that we use. Bob Barker's recent passing had the TV tabloids Digging into his past, including reported sexual slavery situation and sexual harassment lawsuit with uh, former Price is Right and Playboy model Diane Parkinson, yeah. who claimed that she was his sexual toy. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Bob, wow. Bob Barker. Bobby boy. Uh, Control yourself. Yeah, this is ABC News. Click on that one. No, no, no. Down, 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 down. down, down. down, down. Right, click on that one right there. This is from ABC News from 2011. Let me see the headline. You scroll right past the The Price is Right show model claims sexual harassment and false imprisonment. Uh, September 8, 2011, the popular television game show The Price is Right has been hit with a sexual harassment lawsuit by former show model Lanisha Cole. The lawsuit includes seven complaints against two of the show's producers. Uh, uh, Lanisha Cole was one of Barker's beauties. Uh, this might not be... Diane was the was the I think the famous one. Yeah, that was back like in I think the eighties, right? She was so, on during that time. Right. But wow. All right. Now, let's talk about a little Mega Millions bamboozle. Uh no winner last night in Powerball. Of course, this week has been, you know, kind of a busy week with the the big, you know, national lotteries because of course, Mega Millions uh, was a $1.13 billion jackpot. Only one ticket won. It was, uh, what, in New Jersey? Sold at some liquor store. So somebody won $1.13 billion. One ticket, one winner with the number of people. That just shows you how crummy and crappy the odds are when you have so many tens and tens of millions of people buying these tickets nationwide, buying 20, 30, 100 at a time or whatever, and one person won, but look how many drawings you had with no winners. It was like 30-something drawings with no winners before they had a winner. Just shows you how bad the odds are. But And then uh, Powerball 
is up to nine hundred thirty-five million now because there was no winner for Powerball last night. But I want to just take a moment and I want to talk about the the bamboozle screw job here with Mega Millions because. The number that the person's going to get is, again, just even more of a fraction than you're used to. We all know that if you win the big mega lotteries, that when you take the cash option, it's like half of the advertised number. But listen to this. My God, $1.13 billion jackpot. One winning ticket in New Jersey. You think you're going to be a billionaire. $1.13 billion. So you take... The cash option. So you take the lump sum, so it's not the annuitized 30-year payout. You take the lump sum, and that's $540 million. But wait, of course, you've got federal taxes. After federal taxes... Was that like a third, or was it 40%? After federal taxes, you will walk away with $340. Forty million dollars, so one point one three billion becomes three hundred forty million. Then, here we go in New Jersey. It's a high personal tax state, right? And there are some states that don't tax lottery winnings, like California, on a state level. Believe it or not, but that's New a Jersey, shocker. But New Jersey does. Uh, Florida, they don't tax uh, lottery winnings here in Florida. New Jersey does. So one point one three billion. Take you take the cash option. You're down to five hundred forty million. You take the federal taxes off. You're down to three hundred forty million. And then New Jersey has to get their grubby ass hands mm. in it. You're down to, after Jersey taxes. Your one point one three billion is now a paltry, measly two hundred eighty million dollars. I can't get by on that. And, and, you know, people will say, well, that's ridiculous. $280 million is a life-changing amount. That's amazing. That's it, fantastic. It is, but it's yeah. not what you were buying that ticket for. Yeah, it, You were it, buying it for the one to become a billionaire. Listen, well, I turn $280 million uh, away? Of course not. That's a, a crap load of money. It's more money than you'll ever be able to spend. Well, yeah. unless you're reckless uh, and you buy all kinds of crazy crap like uh, MC Hammer or whatever. But... <laughs> Yes, but, that's the best example or, you can come or, up with. Or Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <That's the hammer. laughs> All right. So just the math, the lottery math, it sometimes it just doesn't appear what it is, but it is still a boatload of money, and I'm not going to turn it away. 7.15 at the MJ Morning Show. We roll out an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ next. Got to talk about women and long hair. There is something about women and long hair that you have to hear. I've got a couple of emails I need to address. I have a listener trying to call me out saying, I didn't do my due diligence on something. Hold on. Let's uh, set it straight. Uh, A couple of food items for Fester. There was one that I teased yesterday. We never got to. We'll do it today. So bottom line, loaded. Next, hour 20 minutes, nonstop MJ. Starts in minutes right here on Q105. Got it.
105.5 Fester, is everything okay? Uh, that was awkward. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, folks, we're starting an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. And, of course, make sure you bring us into your place of work. If you're enjoying us right now, or if you enjoy us for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, while you're driving, bring us into where you're going. Listen on your smartphone. We're on all the apps. Just search for Q105 Tampa Bay. Listen on 104.7 FM on your computer. Just go to mjmorningshow.com and click on Listen Live in the upper right-hand corner. And you can listen out of your computer speakers. Anyway, what, what just happened in the studio was, all right, I'm a nosy Son of a... You're a fairly nosy person. I, I am. So, uh, Fester's phone rings, right. and, and luckily it was uh, off the air, and you have this proclivity to never put your phone on vibrate or silent. You interrupt the show probably, I don't know, at least once or twice a week at with least. Your, your phone ringing. Correct. And it rang, but it was during the commercial break, mm-hmm. and... You pick up on speaker. Well, it was it was a FaceTime call. Oh, oh, it was FaceTime. Yeah, okay, it was I, I couldn't FaceTime. see that. Yeah, my wife I, called me on FaceTime. But you were on speaker. Right, because out loud, right. Don't but, they usually call you this time to say hi and all that? Yeah, usually about this time is when everybody's but, in the car getting ready for school or something like that. But she got testy. She got very... It, it, you tried to... Did you try to blow her off? And then no. all, all I heard was... Dom, I need to talk to you about the kids. Yeah, oh, and like then the I, house is then, burning but down. But wait right? a minute. But then I had to say to Fester, this is all off the air during the break. I'm like, Fester, leave the room. She didn't want to obviously talk about this in front of me or the whole room. I don't know this so, going into it. I pick up the FaceTime call and I say, hey, guys, we're, I'm in the studio. Just so you know, you give the courtesy. Hey, everybody can hear you. So, so don't talk crap so about they don't, MJ. So they don't or blurt out something yeah. ultra personal. Right. Like, like uh, you got a hemorrhoid the size of a Nerf football right now. Who the hell told you? Uh, oh, my God. Allison, did she text me last? She can't keep her mouth shut right. for anything. So, I'll check it later. Thanks, right. No, so you know, don't say anything. So I was like, hey, you're but, on speaker. Hey, guys. And I thought it'd be a nice, but then give the kids a good day I, message. I could hear that it was like, I need to talk to you about the kids. And I, I said to you, Fester, leave the study, uh, studio and talk to your wife about the kids. So I call her back. Right. I think I need to work in more whippings on my son. I don't know. Right, hold on. What's, just, can you discuss the issue? What's well, there's obviously more some kind whippings. Of, more whippings. Uh, no, obviously a big crisis here. What, what's going on? Can you share, or is it personal and confidential? Don't so, tell him. Some days the kid. <laughs> some day Hudson has a tougher morning than others, and this was a tough one. He likes to growl now. Oh, like, he's going through the hold, growling stage. He's going through the growling stage, like like a dog, like Roy on on uh, Ted Lasso. <laughs> Who's watched Ted Lasso in this room? I have. I, I, I oh, haven't watched come the, no, on. Two episodes. I, I haven't I watched just, the yeah. last season. I saw the first two seasons. Oh, all right. So Roy. Yes. Roy on Ted Lasso. He like. Yes. He. So I'm just asking if your kid is growling like Roy from Ted Lasso. You know. Uh, you know what? We just finished the third season. And, you know, we don't subscribe to Apple TV. But as a sag after a member, I get all the screeners or digital access. And uh, this uh, time around, uh, Apple sent out the actual DVDs uh, for the final season of Ted Lasso. And that's how I had watched Ted Lasso is because I've gotten, every year I've gotten the DVDs or digital access to watch it for voting for SAG after awards season. Right. And we just finished the third season. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I thought they ended it perfectly, you know, because it's done. That, Ted Lasso, they say, was meant to be three seasons, three and done. So one, two, three, and they're out. I saw the first two, and then yep. my free trial subscription with my Apple purchase expired, so yep. I haven't seen the third one yet. Well, but some people were complaining that the third season was not good, and you know, were there a couple of slower, you know, episodes in the maybe? But I thought overall, I thought the third season of Ted Lasso was very good. All right, so oh, your kid is he's like uh, a, he's like a little mini Roy Kent. All right, so he's, uh, he's, he's so uh, he's, when he gets he's, frustrated or he doesn't get his way. Right. We've talked to him about not yelling. We've talked to him about not acting out. So he'll sit there and he'll stew, but his way of communicating becomes. Uh, is he how? Uh, he hasn't that. broken into a howl yet. That would be cool. However, after hearing Uncle Froggy now, he's probably going to start, start howling. Pick it up and ask. No, so he's growling, and the growling is causing a little bit of friction this morning. So, Do you Allison, know where he got 
the growling from? Dude, I think of all the like uh, the pet videos he watches on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Would it be out of line if I called Allison now and got your son to growl on the phone? He's all he's out of the car. Now. Oh, he's, he's out of the gone. car. Now. She pulled over right. outside of the school so I could talk to him about not growling in oh, class today. Oh, was oh so he was still in the yeah, car. They were in the car. They were so, in the car. Wait a minute. You've heard from his teacher that. No, no, no. He's growling? Well, no. But we I mean, uh, hopefully he doesn't start snapping. So I have to, like, uh, he was growling, and I guess mom and him were talking about growling. Have you so, given him sausages? Oh, Put a yeah, muzzle yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, only sausages. Yeah, we love sausages. Yeah. You know what? Begging strips Be- is his favorite. Begging, 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 begging. So, <laughs> no, I just had to, I had to kind of change the vibe in the car before the kid gets dropped off. That's it. Should I call Allison, or is that going to keep make, her off? Can't make it any worse. I mean, you know. I don't know. Kid's not there. He can't growl for you. So he's going. He growls. Yeah, that's Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. Mm. Yep. Mm. So I had to talk him off of his growling ledge. Hey, you want to hear regarding parents and kids? You want to? I'm going to say something, and there are going to be people. That will immediately identify with this. Hey, it might be you guys. I don't know if we ever used a public park for a birthday party, but are you aware of the competitiveness that exists when you want to use like a public space, a playground or a park area? Where they have the like the pavilion, yes, the pavilion, oh, yeah. the, yes. the pavilions, pavilion or, wars, or there. Oh, yes. that's a, that's a TV show, <laughs> Pavilion Wars, speaking, Just beating each other for the best pavilion. Speaking of my wildly disobedient son Hudson, I think the weekend or the weekend before last, yeah. they had it was in, in Carrollwood Park. It's a beautiful park, yeah, but they have like four or five pavilions yeah. around the playground. And they had a birthday party for one of the kids in his you class. You got to rent those things, right? Yeah, you got to well, you got to do it in advance. A lot of times you got to go to the parks department, or there's someone in charge, and you have to sign up and get a. But sometimes weeks in advance. You, oh, sometimes months in advance. Yeah. Now, do some places charge a fee even to sign up, or is it really just? Uh, I, I don't know what it is locally, and but I'm sure nationally there's uh, around the country. I'm sure there are different circumstances. But listen to this, <laughs> parents reserved these park benches, these picnic tables for a party. This was a a whole story that was posted online in a Reddit forum. And listen to this. Parents, not only did they mark their territory by decorating three tables by getting to the park ultra, 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 ultra early. Sure. So I don't know whether the birthday party was like at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. They got there apparently at the crack of ass uh, to like decorate the tables to like, uh, what do you, you know, squat to, yeah, to you know, mark your area, mar- mark their area, take the tables, squat the tables, you know, mark their territory. So they peed look, on the table. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They let everybody know. Really they, left, they left their scent on the table. Mm, All right. But listen to this. There was a story how. The mother or the parents, they decorated the table er, tables. There were three tables at this park. And not only did they decorate and squat the tables early in the day, they left a threatening note that if you steal these tables, that they will ruin your child's birthday party. <laughs> Listen. Wow. That's a threat. <laughs> That's exactly. Can you imagine? That's crazy. We've decorated these tables. These tables are ours for little Caleb's birthday later this morning. If you take our tables, we are going to torpedo. We're going to ruin your kid's birthday party. <laughs> That's wow. great. What are we going to Pepper spray all the kids? Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. That, so they they put a note on all of the tables. They decorated the tables, and then they had a note on each table, reserved for birthday party. Please respect this space that we've set aside. Do not use our tables. This is for a four-year-old's birthday party. Don't be the one to mess it up. If you take our tables, we will ruin your child's birthday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the note That's, that was left on the tables. The key I is like to, it. The key is to properly reserve it. I mean, there has to be a reservation oh, system. But yeah. 
You ever notice when you're at those parties, I, I hate to say this, but like you look around, nobody looks happy. Nobody looks no, happy. Right? No parents look happy because they're just chase keeping little Johnny from sticking his fingers in the cake before it's, you know, before you sung happy birthday. No, Everybody's miserable. About a month ago, <laughs> about a month ago, I took my two kids on a Saturday down to Armature Works. And next to Armature Works is Eulalie. And next to that is that Waterworks uh-huh. Park near downtown. So the kids wanted to go to the park, and I'm like, all right, fine, go run, get it well, out of your system. That whole Eulalie area, like you walk yeah. through, that is really nice. Yeah. You know, we uh, ate at Eulalie last year, right. and, you know, the food was great. We had a great experience at Eulalie. But walking into their compound right. and that whole, what do you call that? Um it's like a garden area. It's just it's just nice. Yeah. Then they yeah. have the field off to the side in the park. And I'm at this park and I'm watching the kids play and you know, we'll let them get their energy out. And they're setting up for a birthday right in the middle of all these other people walking through. Everything's blowing over. They bring some wonky looking cake and all these kids are going crazy. I'm thinking, this is the worst birthday party ever. But you know, the kids had fun. But these parks are a tough place to have a party. Yeah, they are. And then and then like you said, the the common area of the playground. Bad stuff can happen there, too. Yeah. You know, it's funny you bring up playground. Uh, I saw an item earlier this week. It's been in my pile. I just grabbed it because it's kind of relevant. It's a, it's an interesting segue. And I, I don't like to hear this. It's about playground bullies. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. We've encountered them. Well, listen to this. Playground bullies prosper more in life later on and go on to earn more money. According to research, children who display aggressive behavior at school, such as bullying or temper outbursts, are likely to earn more money later in life, according to a five-decade study that upends the maxim that bullies do not prosper. This kind of sucks. Uh, is it because they're more aggressive in their... They grow up and bully people. Well, That's their, all. their career choice? The more competitive or, person? Yeah. Okay, you could do that same study and use prison. <laughs> and I bet you there's more playground bullies in prison than not. True. Yeah. <laughs> they're also more likely to have a higher job satisfaction and be in more desirable jobs, according to research from... The Institute for Social Economic Research at the University of Essex. So this is a, a British study. Right. Yeah, they followed uh, individuals and used data from more than 7,000 people born uh, within the last five decades. That's, that's crazy. We found that children who teachers felt had problems with attention, peer relationships, and emotional instability did... Uh, end up earning less in the future as we expected, but we were surprised to find a strong link between aggressive behavior at school and higher earnings later in life. Interesting. You hey. know, I was at the I was at the park the other day with Daviana and three of her other little three, you know, four year old playmates, and I'm sitting talking to the mom, and then we all of a sudden I see Daviana and she is in this like nine year old boy's face. Oh, shanking him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, but the, like a Shawshank yeah. shank. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't write that. You are mean. God sees you. Jesus sees you. Oh, and whoa, she's whoa, like whoa, in whoa, his whoa, face. Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Davian was in his wait, face, wait, right? Hold on, hold on. You're, 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 your kid is. <laughs> where's yeah, your she's kid, a religious zealot. Where's she your is. kid getting this stuff? She goes to a religious school. She goes to a Christian school. She's going to go on college campuses to <laughs> preach. Yeah, she's, she's, your kid's going to go to Ebor City with a megaphone <laughs> on Saturday night. <laughs> no, she's, no, she's very deep. She's very, but she's right. She's like, God's watching you, you whatever. So I go back. You are go, going to hell. Yeah. yeah. You, she's, got her, she's got her megaphone. The rapture <laughs> is coming. <laughs> you are going to hell. Yes. You'll burn in eternity. So I was like, you little yeah. bitch child. <laughs> Whoa, <hey. laughs> but you guys, Froggy and Fester, you've seen Daviana's personality. She's kind of like, you know, she's not afraid to get in people's she's faces. She's a brave she's, kid. She, yeah. She's a brave kid. So I was like, Daviana, good job. Good job. But let me talk to this. And I, and I said to the nine-year-old, I go, oh, the reason they were mad at him, he had written, you suck. 
about one of their fr- about one of Daviana's friends. Oh, I said, I'm fighting right. Yeah, so that's why she was screaming at him. And I was like, really? Is this what you want for yourself? Wow. And I go, these are four year old little girls. What are you doing? You're and yelling then they at all- the kid. I mean, oh gosh, yeah, I did. But then they all ended up playing together. And it- I, mean, I mean, I didn't yell at him, but I just talked to him. I was like, this is not the path for you, you know, buddy. Some four year- so some- now I've say I've I've kept him from making money as a successful CEO or whatever it is your study says, MJ, that bullies grow up to make more money. Yeah. I, I took him off that path. It all comes back you. down to that one time this lady yelled at me when I was nine years old. <laughs> Who yelled at you when you were nine no, years Roxanne, old? No, I, I, I went up to this little kid. I was like, Roxanne. you don't need to be right. saying that right. four-year-olds suck. I saw an item from Arizona, but it got me think. I typically wouldn't have done this story, maybe. You know, maybe if I had a whole pile of, like, school fools and we had crazy bus drivers that, you know, drove through a supermarket or something or, you know, you had a bus driver, you know, with a, a 0.24 blood alcohol level, you know, driving through playgrounds and parking lots and smashing into cars with kids. on. But th- this is kind of a, an item that I saw uh, earlier this week. And, you know, I'm like, you know what? It triggered a memory of a local story. And I thought it was just kind of interesting to bring up. I saw an item about a teacher in Arizona who's been arrested for secretly recording students while they were undressing. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is sick. It's uh, an awful, awful story. Uh, According to court documents, 53-year-old Estevan Carrion arranged a meeting with students at Independence High School in Glendale, Arizona during spring break to receive extra credit. Before their arrival, court documents state that he set up spy cameras in the changing room that the kids would use. I don't know. While recording their school subject, the students would reportedly change in and out of different outfits that they used uh, the classroom changing room. Anyway, he had set up a hidden camera. Fester, yes. do, you, do you remember what local story? So I saw this. And again, I probably wouldn't have mentioned this story. Anytime you mention right. teacher observing students doing anything. But there's a local story that happened some time ago. I always think of and, one case, and I think it's the same one. All right, hang on. Well, let's see if you're right. So when I saw this from Arizona, I'm like, oh, man. And it just brought back the memory of a local story. Fester, what do you think it is? I remember there was a local swimming coach, and I think it was at a private school yep. that yep. he was over the maybe the girls' swimming team or something, and yeah. he kept the camera All right. in the... Uh, I forget the guy's name. All right, so to the administration of Tampa Prep. Yeah, Tampa Prep. That's I, right. I, I'm sorry to uh, dig it up 20 he, years later. I'm sorry to dig it back up, but when I saw this about a teacher planting a camera to capture <sighs> students uh, undressing. Kimberly Brabson was his name. Y- yeah. So, and I, I actually went back to the St. Pete Times uh, archives yeah. and I found the story. Uh, at Two Sisters Sue Tampa Prep, an ex-swim coach. Uh, this is from January 19th of 2007. As a high school student, Kimberly Brabson III was disciplined for stealing girls' panties from a locker room. Oh. So he went on to become the swim coach. So he was already stealing girls' panties back when he was a student. As a swim coach at a private Tampa school, he's now accused of secretly videotaping young female students in the nude. Two of the girls filed suit Thursday, claiming, among other things, that Tampa Preparatory School didn't thoroughly check Brabson's past before entrusting him with children and young teens. All right, so I don't need to go into the whole story here, but I also remember that uh, local attorney Tom Carey Sure. Remember, remember, he called our show back in like 2007. Longtime attorney, good man. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, we, we had numerous conversations with Tom Carey, a local Clearwater attorney, well known. He had billboards up all over town for. So he still does. Does he? So yeah. yeah. Uh, and I remember we talked to him about this, and what happened was uh, the swim coach set up a secret camera in his office. And would use some kind of ruse to tell the girls on the swim team that he wants them to try on some potential new swimsuits for competitions or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, try these on in the office. I'm gonna step out. Exactly. Then- but oh, he, he had a he, he had a hidden camera and it was, I think it was in a was it in a clock or something? 
He had a hidden camera. It was a lot of girls. Yeah. It like w- 20 it w- some odd girls, I think. Of. Yeah. Uh, the story goes on. Brabson, 29, faces 10 right. counts of video voyeurism. This is old news now. Come on. This yeah. is 2007, oh, it, it 2006. Is, but, but what I'm saying is when I just saw the story from this week about a teacher in Arizona. I wanted to know. Videoing. Uh, <laughs> He's getting into the weeds on a 20-year-old yeah. story, though. I'm trying to say. No, look, I, I, that's it. I, that's it. I'm, I'm done with it. But it just reminded me of that the, the rough patch over at Tampa Prep with the swim coach that was... Having yeah. girls try on swimsuits in his office, and he had a hidden camera rolling. I don't know how I feel about men named Kimberly. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be invited to Tampa <laughs> Prep for the big teaching anytime soon. No, but, no, you're not. You're not allowed. But listen, Tampa Prep's a good school. We've had plenty of friends over the years. Yeah. Yeah, you're not saying the school's bad. No, 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 no. We've had plenty of friends whose kids went to Tampa Prep over the years, and they were very happy with the education received at Tampa. Know. Prep. Froggy and I are more Tampa Catholic guys. That's right. Yep. Crusaders. Go Crusaders. Go Crusaders. <laughs> My kids were uh, short crest kids. You know. Nah, it's Crusaders for life. My life. kid's going to be juvenile hall. There was an <laughs> item that I teased yesterday that I got to get to. But first, at 747, women and long hair. Roxanne. Yes. You're the only woman in the room. So if I've got a story about women with long hair, are there any particular items or issues or anything that pops into your head if I'm about to get into a story about women with long hair? I read this story. Oh, so you got to (laughs) recuse yourself. (laughs) I I read this story. What do you remember from the story about women with long hair? Okay, let me let me clarify. I read the headline, and I didn't even need to read the story. I mean, I don't mean it like that. I just read the headline. Do you agree with the supposition, with the premise, with the apparent research here do you I don't, agree i don't know because i've always been a long-haired woman i'm trying to find the reason why that would be the case because okay. your caveman guy can chase you down come here woman grab you by your hair easier to well, touch as a woman with long hair it says that you're more attractive and you have more sex well, you have to talk to my husband about that, but I know he loves my long hair because if we want to pretend like he's not bald, I can pull it up over my head and put it over his bald head and we can see what yeah, he looks like. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You've never been bald, but my daughter does that all the time. She takes her long hair and says, this is what you look like with hair, dad. Um, so it comes in handy that way. So long haired women have more sex and are more attractive? Yeah. So uh, research has shown that there's a correlation, a connection between the woman's hair length and their sex life. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Uh, hmm. This is a study which was published hmm. in the journal Evolutionary Psychology. Researchers wanted to know whether women with long hair were more likely to... Hang on, I need some music for this. Hold on a minute. Let me get the right music. So the researchers wanted to know whether women with long hair... <sighs> Got it on a little more often than those who had shorter hair. It's just like a whoosh, I'm home with my long hair. Don't you want to take me now? You know what? I I want to talk to some women who get it on all the time who have crew cuts. I'm sure they're out there. Listen, it goes back to like, uh, you know, Venus, uh, Rapunzel, for instance. And in the research project, it says such depictions of women with long, silky hair create an image of womanliness, Hmm. which may be alluring to the perceiver owing to the intricate sense of femininity displayed. The image of an ideal woman often involves having long, silky hair. So they did a whole study to test this out, whether a woman's hair had any bearing on her bedroom activities. The team uh, of researchers, they recruited 204 heterosexual married couples, asking them questions about hair length, hair quality, attractiveness, sexual desire, sexual frequency, sexual satisfaction. 
Uh, and, well, the research shows... Uh, I don't well, know. I don't buy any of this. Horny for hair, okay? <laughs> horny for hair. I think if I did a study on women with short hair, I'd come up with the same conclusion and say, oh, women with short hair. Men <laughs> found women with longer hair to be more attractive, which consequently resulted in heightened sexual desire among men. This heightened sexual desire was again associated with a higher likelihood of more frequent sexual uh, interaction within the couples. So again, going back to the headline, women with long hair are more attractive and have more sex. Well, if I cut my hair super short, I'll tell you if it decreases. You know what? <laughs> I want you to, you know what? Let's test Shave it out. I want you to sport a Rachel Maddow haircut. <laughs> oh, God, it's so hot. <laughs> you talk about somebody who probably gets plenty of sex. <laughs> Rachel Maddow. All right, Fester, let's talk about food. Let's. Are you a Costco member? I am not a Costco member. I am a Sam's Clubber. Okay, so you're a Sam's guy. Well, this is Costco related, but this could easily affect you. April 8th. If you think the only thing happening April 8th is the big, huge eclipse. You know what? I You ought to see my eclipse pile. For the last, like, month and a half, I've been compiling all of these eclipse stories with the eclipse happening in uh, what, ten days? Next year, twelve days, whatever it is. It's the eighth. It's yeah. April eighth. The eclipse is happening April eighth in Florida at our latitude and longitude here in the Tampa Bay area. I believe that we're set to get about sixty five percent of the eclipse. Is that going to dim anything, or is it even going to have any effect? It's going to be pitch black out. No, man. no, no it's only not. if you're underneath no, no. the path no. of total eclipse. You got to be like. Of your heart? You have to be like in Indianapolis. You know, there's a whole I path. Wish. Do you know how many people have booked trips to the Eclipse Path through Texas? Uh, was it part how of big is Arkansas? It? Dude. So it's about like a hundred mile wide swath. Yeah. And it rolls through Texas. It goes into uh, like southern Oklahoma. It goes through Arkansas. It goes into like southern... Kentucky, uh, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, and into Illinois, y- Indianapolis, right over Indianapolis. Yeah. Out through Columbus, Cleveland. Columbus, Ohio, Niagara Falls, uh, like uh, Plattsburgh, New York, the upper part of New York State. And then uh, the, the upper, upper parts of uh, New Hampshire and Vermont. And then into a, a good, huge stretch of uh, Maine gets the eclipse so here in florida we're supposed to get like 65 percent or so where we are of the eclipse but the the point is i I have this whole eclipse pile that i'll get to over the next you know couple of days or you know just before the eclipse just some interesting stuff all the conspiracy stuff coming out uh a bunch of people think that it's the end of the world i mean come on probably is We, we had a we had a total eclipse back in like, was it 2016 or 2017? 17, yeah, 17, 18, yeah, something like that. Is that the yeah. one that Donald Trump said he could beat and he stared at? Oh, that's, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have the glasses. <laughs> yeah, Trump, Trump was told, do not look at the... And there's an image Screw of him. You. He's looking right at the eclipse from like from like the White, <laughs> the White House balcony or something. My eyes unaffected. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the world did not end like back in 2017 or whatever it was when we had the eclipse then. Uh, the world is not going to end. <laughs> it's not going to end on April 8th either. But let me tell you what. Here's what, a news article from yesterday. Take a lesson from former President Trump when the next solar eclipse happens in April. And they have Listen, the picture of him looking straight up at the eclipse. File this under what not to do during the <laughs> solar eclipse. There's a picture of him looking up. Uh, so uh, there is a potential groundbreaking. This is the end of the world for some people. Yeah. Do you know what's going to happen at Costco on April 8th? Oh, is it what I think it is regarding? Well, they're putting signs up. Yeah, the FC. Food the court? FC? Oh, yeah, yeah food court. Food yes. Court? Uh, okay. What's going on? Costco apparently is going to end the ability, the, the lax policy of allowing non-members to go in and get the, like, 150 uh, hot dog and drink deal. So apparently signs, I have not been at Costco in a while. In fact, my Costco membership has run out. And- uh, so next time I, I need to go to Costco, you know, next month or two, 
uh, then I'll I'll re up my membership. But we've talked about this. So that I only go to Costco like like typically four or five times a year, maybe. I'm not like a regular because it's not. If it was right next door or right near me in South Tampa, uh, I'd probably go more. But Costco has a number of things that I definitely want, but I don't need to go every week. So uh, my membership is not in effect now. But the story goes that on April 8th, there were signs that were posted. uh, Listen to this. Effective April 8th, 2024. An active Costco membership card will be required to purchase items from our food court. So you have to show your card there, too? Yeah, yep. Kind of seems like a pain in the ass. You know, the $1.99 pizza, the $1.50 hot dog and drink combo, memberships at Costco, I remember it used to be like, what, 40 bucks a year. Costco, the cheapest membership now is $60 a year, but... Historically, if you were a non-Costco member, you could still stop by, and they would let you into the food court. But I say we revolt. <laughs> yes. So the food court's available. Also, you could shop at the liquor store without a membership. Also, guess where else you can get deep into Costco and buy something without a membership? Do you know what that is? In, in many cases. No. Tobacco. Nope. I don't know what. A laptop? For a, la- a laptop, a laptop. Why, why, okay. wait a minute. Why, why no. would you? Why would you be able to go to Costco and buy a laptop without a membership? I don't know because my, my brain just went. You said deep into Costco, and I thought deep web, and then I thought laptop. Okay. That's just right. how my brain worked. Right. Boom, right. boom, boom, boom. You, you mean dark web? Boom. Dark web, deep, deep web, web. Right. also deep web. All right. Prescriptions. Yeah, you don't yeah. need a membership for prescriptions. Well, in some states, you know, I, I. Don't know what the Florida rule is, because whenever I've gotten a prescription to Costco, at least uh, in Florida, I've had a prescription and a membership. Now, I know up in New York, up in New York, uh, I did not have a Costco membership in New York, but I was able to go into Costco and get some prescriptions. But... uh, I don't know if it's a nationwide policy, but I know that some states have laws that you cannot prevent people from using your pharmacy if they don't have a membership. So I don't know if uh, Costco has a so I'm, a I'll, nationwide policy. I'm but, on the Costco website, right? and it says, uh, yep. the question, Q&A, do I need a membership to purchase prescription drugs? Answer, you do not need to be a Costco member to purchase Costco pharmacy prescriptions online or at our warehouse. Look at that. Yep. So I guess that's the policy that they have nationwide. But I also know there are some states that have laws that you cannot force somebody to buy a membership to then use the pharmacy. So they must have just made it just a, a national policy that anyone can go into Costco or Sam's for that matter. I don't know about the Sam's. So it would be the same Maybe same the policy. same thing. So, uh, but heads up, if you've been a freeloader just popping in for the dollar uh, fifty hot dog and drink, they're going to crack down on that. Apparently, mm. beginning on April eighth, the big eclipse day. Fester, one other item for you. Is it McDonald's and Krispy Kreme? No. Oh damn it! I'm so excited about this. But that is another story yes. that. Uh, there's a new partnership where McDonald's, they're going to sell Krispy Kremes. They're going to sell Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. I think in two years, it's going to be nationwide. And this is the first steps, I'm telling, I'm predicting it now, oh. to the Krispy Kreme cheeseburger being offered at McDonald's. Oh, the quarter pounder yeah. with Krispy Kreme. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I would love that. Of course you would. Sure. Well, why not? What's a donut? Oh, it's like, essentially bread. Well, donuts are what put you in a hospital it's a few weeks ago. It's essentially bread. <laughs> That's true, too. But I'm not going to eat 50 of them. <laughs> we could redo the song uh, for the Big Mac. Yeah. Two all beef patty special sauce, sauce lettuce, lettuce, cheese, cheese pickles, onions on, on a, a Krispy Kreme oh, glazed donut. You could put it between three of them, a donut in the middle, oh, donut on top, donut on the bottom. They ought to redo that. Yes. Two all beef patty, patty special, special sauce, sauce, lettuce, cheese, cheese pickles, sauce, onions on a Krispy oh, Kreme donut. Oh, it's a lot. No, it's not. It works perfectly. It doesn't work at all. It's, I, it does. I'm glad I'm sitting down behind a counter because I am... Turned on right now. <laughs> yeah. oh, you know what, Fest? Come just on. Saying, this is. All right, well, I'm a, with I, I've got the, some Dollar Tree news for you now. Okay. So Dollar Tree was a dollar. Right. Then with inflation, Dollar Tree went to a dollar twenty-five. Then did they already go to a dollar fifty? 
Because now I'm seeing that Dollar Tree is, I guess, raising prices or they have raised prices to $1.50. But listen to this. Dollar Tree is also going to have items now with a maximum price of $7. I know this. They have like the, the dollar uh, the dollar and more section that they have really a lot better quality things, but like three dollars, four dollars, five dollars. Now it's up to seven. But apparently, they've already moved to a dollar fifty. So the dollar became a buck and a quarter, and everyone was joking. Oh, it's now a dollar twenty-five tree. I guess they had already increased the prices to a dollar fifty. It's the dollar fifty tree now. Yeah. So I know that Fester, that's one of the favorites. A dollar fifty. A lot of their crap just isn't worth a dollar fifty. I mean, some uh, some of their crap is marginally <laughs> worth a dollar. Then there's other things that's a real steal at a dollar, dollar fifty. Um, have you ever, you've never been to a Five Below? I you know what? I've never been inside Five Below. Okay. That is correct. What's I, the place I always mix that up with? Because every time you say Five Below, I picture that place in Vegas where you put on your Eskimo suit, not that place, and you go in and you, and you drink really cold yeah. liquor. It's not a. It's not a. Igloo bar. Yeah. But five. <laughs> that's what they are. It was ice bars. Right? Yeah, ice, ice bars. bars. But yeah. there's one that's called like, Z- yeah. Okay. So but what's you, five below? You confuse the discount store with a, an ice bar. <laughs> yeah. Usually the ones, the ones. Or, or, the, or the ice hotel up in like uh, Finland or whatever. Right. The ones that I'm talking about, Roxanne, are usually found in strip oh. malls next to Home Goods okay. or something. Okay. I got you. The one I'm thinking of, this is an honest mistake, minus five degrees. Right? That's an honest mistake Five for, below. Al- for alcoholics. <laughs> I mean, how come I'm thinking of a bar in Vegas? Close. No, but five below, MJ. They used to have everything $5 or less. Now they have things up to $25. 25 and above. I know. It's nuts. It's like five and more. I'm like, oh, get out of here. You should go to five below. You know why you'd like five below? They've got a ton of kind of retro style candy there, man. And you have to be... You get a discount if you're below five feet. Yeah. <laughs> and so, hey, you like retro candy? Is I, that I'm your not, thing? I'm not below five feet. Yeah, five. Mm. Cut the crap. Pick out the ruler. <laughs> Bring Shorty Shane in and have him fight for his discount. <laughs> you guys done? Uh, no. Let's talk about five below more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got an email. What the hell did I do with it? Uh, I can't find it, but I can bring it up on my phone. I've got a listener calling me out. Yep, yeah, uh, listener calling me out. Uh, let me let me uh, let me read this particular email. Robert sent me an email. Hi MJ, it seems that you did not do a good job trying to find this movie. A simple search revealed it's currently on Max, also available to rent for three ninety nine on Apple TV. <gasps> Honeymoon in Vegas. If you were listening to yesterday's show, I was a little peeved at my lovely wife, Michelle, because for whatever reason, she got a a, a bug up her butt that she wanted to watch Honeymoon in Vegas with Chloe on Tuesday night. So we've got Netflix, we've got Hulu, we've got Max because we're HBO subscribers and it's nowhere. The damn movie, it's nowhere uh, for free. I mean, I did a search. And then, all right, so we'll rent the movie for $2.99 or $3.99. And guess what? Honeymoon in Vegas with Nicolas Cage, it's not available for rent. You have to buy the movie. The movie is $14.99. You got to buy it. And it's not even in high definition or uh, 4K. It's standard definition. So Michelle's like, we're watching the movie. We'll buy the movie. I'm like, Michelle, come on. There are 50,000 other movies out there. Can you, I don't want to buy Honeymoon in Vegas. I own it forever, digitally. It's it's owned forever in our Amazon digital collection because I want to repeatedly go back and watch The Flying Elvises. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I, it wasn't worth the fight. So I went in, I bought the damn movie for $14.99 plus tax. What is this listener saying? Because I well, typed in Honeymoon in yeah. Vegas streaming, and the first two things that well, comes up is Apple TV and Amazon Prime yeah, for fourteen. Four, you, you got to buy it. So the listener, Robert, I think uh, got a little confused because the listener's trying to say that, like, I'm a, I'm a bad researcher or I didn't do my due diligence. I'm a hmm. slacker. Both of those terms I would not necessarily use to describe you at first. So... Robert is saying that it seems like I did not do a good job 
How's he confused? What, what, what is he thinking? Because he says leaving Las Vegas. No, it was honeymoon in Vegas, not yeah. leaving Las Vegas. Oh, so now you're showing him. So leaving Las Vegas apparently is for rent for three ninety nine on uh, some of the rental apps. But I guess leaving Las Vegas. Uh, I think it's on Max. Yeah, leaving Las Vegas uh, is available on Max for free. But that's leaving Las Vegas. Michelle had a bug up her butt to watch Honeymoon in Vegas. So, Robert, Robert, you- thank you very much for the email. But uh, in this case, you are <coughs> wrong. So if you're going to call me out, make sure you got your facts right, okay? Sounds like you're the one that didn't do your due diligence there. Robert, <laughs> Robert, we love you. Th- thanks for listening to the MJ Morning Show. Hey, I want to know if this is true. There are people claiming that if you use a Bath and Body Works car air freshener, that it could hurt you and you could be sent to the hospital. <laughs> wow! You, you know really? what? I have to tell you on that note. Wait, what? Yes. I just have to tell you, I, I told my sister the other day, we were shopping at a at a hotel in Disney and we walked into one of those places. It wasn't Bed Bath, or not Bed Bath & Beyond. It wasn't the, the Bath & Body Works. It was one of those places with all the scents. Yeah. And I walked in and I was like, oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm like, Ange, I'm turning into MJ. I can't, I can't take this assault <laughs> on my on my sniffing system. It was so over the top. You mean your olfactory, olfactory senses? Olfactory system or sniffing system. Well, senses. Yeah. yeah sniffing so system. So I felt like you. Yeah, I hate uh, an overwhelming, whether it's uh, somebody that poured a whole bottle of uh, some perfume over their head, or again, those can like Yankee Candle or Bath and Body Works, or those type of what, Evelyn Crabtree, right? Isn't that another one? Yeah, that's another one. Oh my God. If, like, I don't go to malls much, but, you know, when I was younger, I was probably in the malls a little bit, and I would walk. I would have to walk to the whole other side to prevent yeah. walking by the front of those stores because it was like a, a blast furnace of horrific, just odiferous assault on my cranium. It was just, I couldn't breathe. It's just like too much. Well, listen, we might need to go to phone calls on this. So... A woman claims that she used to work at Bath and Body Works, and this has been happening for years. A woman claimed that Bath and Body Works car air freshener sent her to the hospital. How did she use it? A woman claims that she had to go to the emergency room after a car air freshener from Bath and Body Works exploded in her face. I'm sorry. Exploded? Oh, it was a little, okay. Okay, what? I don't know. I'm thinking of like a, it must be a little system, a little little pressurized system. Uh, Yeah. Fester, go to, open up a new tab, go to Google and type in Bath and Body Works car air freshener and you can see the device. I looked it up when I saw the story. I looked the thing up. Uh, A video was uh, uploaded. It's a, it's a reel. It's on social media and is this it? This little round. This yeah. Is it this yeah, center cut? No, it's no, no, no. It's dude. It, it, you, know, you, you need to go. No, no. Stop looking at the images. Go to Bath and go to their actual website and find the the Bath and Body Works car freshener. They have a whole page of them. They yeah. look like little pucks. Ex- exactly. They it, here's the the eucalyptus spearmint, the mahogany teak wood, the pink pineapple surprise. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the, that one. The surprise is it blows up in your face and it sends you to the emergency room and you got a five thousand dollar bill. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> they have a bunch of good scents here. Yeah. Waikiki Beach Coconut. Mmm. Yeah. Fuji White Sands. Yeah. Fuji. Calypso, Calypso Clementine. Oh, look at this. Smells like weed strains. <laughs> <laughs> apricot assassination. Look at this one. No, that's not a it's not a real. But is this true? I I don't know if we're going to generate phone calls on this. But does anyone know an employee from Bath and Body Works says that their car air fresheners have been blowing up in people's faces for years. So how are they still on the market? All right, if anyone could shed some light on exploding Bath and Body Works air fresheners, could you please phone us up right now? Let's go to the explosion lines, uh, 800-990-1047, 800 
If you have any insight, have you ever had a Bath and Body Works car air freshener blow up or have you had any mishap? <laughs> How do they explode? I mean, it looks like just a plastic disc. In the short video, Kindle is laying in a hospital bed with a pulse monitor as she uses her other hand to dab her eye with a tissue. The skin on her face appears red and blotchy. The video then cuts to an image of what she claims is the inside of her car, which she says was literally bleached by the exploding Bath and Body Works air freshener. In the caption, Kindle notes how she now has to contend with her fat ER bill. Right, my, that's just rude. My God. Now, Fester, did you find another video here? I, I'm looking here. I don't know if this guy's a yuckster or what. Bath and Body Works car air freshener explosion gone wrong. Millions of views on the video. People are saying uh, to sue Bath and Body Works. Uh, the Bath and Body Works wallflowers is pure acid. Somebody said referring to the, the popular air fresheners. Uh, I left... One on my wood table by accident, and it leaked and ate through the wood. All right, that's, uh, I, I mean, I had no idea. Has anyone had any problems with Bath and Body Works car air fresheners? All right, so here she is. Th this is Kindle, right? All right, so roll. Yeah, roll. this is Kindle, right, Brett. You, you got to unmute. Uh, uh, no, no, unmute first. Where, where's the unmute? Uh, uh, right. Over here. It's over, over there. there. I see, I see. Unmute. And right, I so, rewind so go, it. go back. All right, here we go. Run to the beginning and hit it. Go ahead, play. But you did a good job. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, she is. Oh, no. She, she not talk. Oh. Oh, no. She's. It's, it's a. It's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's just it's, text on it. It's video of her with the pulse monitor on her finger. She's dabbing her eyes. She's lying in like an oh. e ER hospital bed, but I guess she's not narrating it. She so, just put it to music. So the text says point of view a Bath and Body Works air car freshener experience overheated and exploded in your face and now you have ocular damage and chemical burns oh my god all right hang on uh, we got some people on hold here all right if you've had any problem or if you know of any exploding bath and body works automobile car air fresheners call us up 800-990-1047 this is a public service there's hey, no way anybody hey, has these things. Roxanne, really? are you still maintaining our public file here at the radio station? Do you, no, you... that's not me. Oh, it's Rico. Me. It's Rico. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what, put this in. Uh, Rebecca's in Wesley Chapel. Hey, Rebecca, welcome to the MJ Morning Show. MJ, I listen to you every day um, on my way to work. I live in Wesley Chapel. I work at Furman Chevrolet in Tampa. So. Ex excellent. Thank you. Hello to all the folks at Furman Chevrolet. Go Bye. ahead. Yep. And hey, Rebecca, do you bring us into work, or are you unable? I mean, I because I, I want to yeah, make it very clear. I'm sorry. Say it I, again. I, I sell, I'm not able to. I sell cars, so right. obviously I don't have that. But I would if I could. Because right. I, 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 I like to tell people that if you listen to us in the car on the way to work, that if you have the ability. Bring us into work because you can listen on your phone on uh, all of the apps. You can search for Q105 Tampa Bay, uh, the My Q105 app. You can go to mjmorningshow.com yeah. and click on Listen Live, listen on your computer speakers. Anyway, so Rebecca, you have some insight onto exploding Bath and Body Works car fresheners. A little bit. Um, and I have a horrendous, a horrendous commute. And I can tell you, it just makes it much easier listening to you guys. But well, thank you. So hold on, you have you have a, a you said you have a horrendous commute, and it makes it easier listening to us. Yeah, it well, just makes the time go by. Thank you. That's the endorsement I want to hear. All right. So what do you know about exploding Bath and Body Works air fresheners? So here's the deal. I am a big big Bath and Body Works person. Um, I like the little things that look like candles that you hang from your rearview mirror. Yep. Um, big into vanilla smells. I always leave that my car always generally smells new. Um, but I had, I just leased a brand new vehicle. I put a vanilla thing from my rear view mirror and because of the heat, it exploded and went all over my dash. Oh my God. So you leased a brand new, I would imagine if you work at Furman Chevy, you leased a Chevy, right? 
Well, actually, I'm a Volvo girl. Oh, Volvo? Oh, okay. All yeah. right. All right. I mean, <laughs> so, all right, don't get me wrong. You could have lied. Oh, oh, I, 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 <laughs> so wait a minute. So you've you've got a new car. Wait a minute. You got a new car, and your vanilla air freshener exploded in your new car and covered the car. Covered the inside of the dash. I mean, were you able to clean it up, or is the car like spoiled and ruined? No. I mean, I'm very fortunate. Um, you know, being at a dealership. I had my best detailer um, get rid of it, like, right after it happened. And, um, you know, and when I lease, I always do wear and tear protection. Right. So, yeah, I got it off, but I was like, oh, yeah, I won't be doing that again. Oh, wow. So you're out of the Bath & Body Works car freshener business is what you're saying? Yes. Currently, I am. Well, look at this. I mean, we have a, a real listener, real individual that had a Bath & Body Works air freshener explode in their car. Well, listen, Rebecca, the good thing is, is that it didn't blow up in your face like this woman that we just spoke about because she's in the hospital. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how that happened. Well, apparently, I, I had another person just message me, MJ. Uh, you clip them onto your visor. Yeah. And then you... Fold your visor out to block the sun, and then it's just like that disc oh, is under a okay. microscope, and then it heats up, and the gel expands, oh, turning man. it essentially into very nicely scented molten lava. It's like a napalm. Yeah. Like an explosion with napalm. But it's like a gel, so when it oh, explodes, man. it clings to you, and that's how it burned uh, wow. this other person. All right, well, listen, I'm glad that you weren't disfigured by this, Rebecca, okay? No. Hey, MJ, can I put one plug in? Um, so several months ago, you did a thing about trucks. Hold on, you're, you're, you're on hands-free, and it's not the clearest. Uh, several months ago, we did a, a something about what? You did about what truck people should buy. Well, what, no, truck, what, tr what truck people should, okay. Right, and I tried to call you, because by far, if I did not want to buy, you know, drive a sedan, which I do now, okay. I would absolutely buy... Silverado all day long. Okay. And I started my career 20 years ago. I was hardcore, hardcore Ford girl. Chevy Silverado has like knocked it out. All right, listen, you, you can buy commercials yeah, a little Ford, later, listen, Rebecca. My hey, Ford's better. Yeah. Hey, listen, Fro Froggy's going to challenge you because yeah. because uh, Froggy loves his brand new Ford F-150. I'll run over your yeah. Silverado yeah. like a monster <laughs> truck. <laughs> Yeah. So, so there, there's going to be an argument here because uh, Froggy just got a break. Listen, the Ford versus Chevy battle, that's, that's going to go on. That's for, chump, that's, that's, chump car. That's going to go on forever and ever and ever. Uh, Rebecca, thanks for the call. Thanks for listening to us every morning. But, uh, Froggy, uh, your wife, when you were out of town, your wife came to my driveway where I, I guess I scared the living daylights out of your kid by having him hold the string. You scarred yeah, him. You scarred him. He's not scarred. So you didn't let him in past the driveway? That was nice of you. No, they came into my driveway. I bet that's as far as But that's it. No, but that's it. Kim was... Fr what, do you want them to sleep in my bed? Listen, hey, hey, give kids, us a tour. Yeah. yeah. All right, back up and not pass the second tree. Okay, you guys, here's the... Here's the, here's the. <laughs> All right, so Kim came to my house last Sunday to pick up that soccer net. That uh, the the bounce back uh, soccer device that Chloe doesn't need anymore, and uh, if folks, if you haven't seen the picture, go to my Instagram. So this is a big soccer kickback where you put it in the yard and the kids can kick the soccer ball in the center and it bounces the ball. It's a training device for soccer, and Chloe doesn't need it anymore. It was taking up space in the garage. So knowing that Froggy's kids uh, play soccer. Uh, I said, hey, you want the device? Called Kim. While you were out of town, Kim drove your brand new Veterans Ford F-150. What, what is the package on yours? There's a there's a special package. It's like a special package. But Tell me about your package more. For <laughs> it was a special built package. What exactly is so special about your package? It was no, like a charade edition or something yeah, like something, that? Yeah, something to that effect. It was cool. Yeah. And uh, so, folks, or if, it is cool. if you haven't seen the picture, it's on my Instagram. I tied the net down in the back of Froggy's F-150, and it wasn't going anywhere. But the tailgate had to be open because uh, Froggy has the shorter bed pickup, not the, the eight-foot bed. And so the tailgate had to be open, and the soccer net went from the back of the bed all the way to the edge of the tailgate. And it was totally tied down. It wasn't going anywhere. But I thought it was going to be fun. 
I got a piece of kite string. Of all, a kite, can you get a worse piece of string? I, I, don't I got, you have line? I got a piece of string. You live on the water. Don't you have a dock rope? I tied dock it. A, rope. <laughs> well, that's that's what I actually tied it down in the bed with. But then I got a thinner like kite string, and I tied it to the back end of the net. It was a dummy string, really. Opened up the electric sliding window on his F-150, and I pulled the string through into the back passenger cab, and I tied a knot into a loop, and I said, Luke, you got to hold on to this string. You're the last line of defense in case my tie-down fails, and this soccer device flies out on the veterans at 65 miles an hour, great, causes a major great. crash, explosions, fire. Oh, my God. Oh, the humanity. Oh, my God. I have to put the microphone down for a few minutes. Hold on a minute. Oh, the humanity. And Wilski. <laughs> Come on, uh, man. All right. So, Wilski of all places, one of my favorite streets. What about Wilski? <laughs> So I have Luke, little Luke is holding the string, thinking that if he lets go, that the soccer net's going to fly out and cause a major crash on the veterans. Very stressed face. But, but you got to see the picture of him in the back seat. Kim, Froggy's wife, took a picture of him holding the string while they were at a red light before they got on the veterans. Very stressed. <laughs> All right. The picture is precious. And he's a lot cuter when he smiles and doesn't have the face of I might kill a family. It, on. The picture. And Kim sends me a text. Thanks, MJ. You've traumatized my kid. Poor <laughs> so if you haven't seen the picture, it's on my Instagram at certified MJ radio. That's certified MJ radio. That is a I have the weight of the world on my shoulder. Facial expression, oh, yeah. right? Because oh, he's got yeah. the string. He's holding the weight. Uh, we got to talk about some celebrity action here. The Sean Diddy stuff and the Britney Spears stuff. Uh, first, Britney Spears. Britney Spears is admitting that she wants to open up about her struggles, but fears that what she has to say is too offensive to share online. What could Britney Spears have to say? You know, we've observed a lot of, you know, interesting I like Britney Spears. I have nothing against Britney Spears. I want Britney Spears to be happy. I met Britney Spears when she was just beginning. Like she was 16, like 16, 17. I think she was either 15. She was opening for NSYNC, right? Yeah. She was 15 or 16. And Britney Spears, before any of the fame, was brought to our old uh, radio station uh, years ago when she was just starting out. She was on a tour with her record company, and we spent like an hour with Britney Spears. Yeah. I met her when she was just a a mid teenager when she before she took off like a rocket. But now she says that she would love to detail a lot of the things that are happening in her life, but she says there are things, a lot of things that have happened. That I'm also not sharing as well. She's on a current trip right now. What kind of trip? Like uh, shrooms? Uh, no, no. She's on a vacation. Oh. She's uh, She went on Instagram yesterday and put some pictures up about her latest uh, beach vacation, wherever the hell it is. And she just ta starts talking about her prior history and even the current trip that she's on that things are happening on her trip that she's not sharing. Okay. She says, nothing is what it seems sometimes. I portray that everything is completely perfect, but trust me, uh, well, first of all, Brittany, I don't think you've portrayed that things are completely perfect. No. I think we all know that you've had a very rocky, troubled life, and I'm very sorry about that. I, I wish her nothing but uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but she's had a That's rough beautiful. time. What is? What you just said to her. That is a beautiful thing. You wish beautiful. her nothing about life, and liberty, it, well, and the pursuit yeah. of happiness? That's the worst thing I've ever and, heard. And it's heartfelt. It's horrible. Life, liberty, and the pursuit. It's, it's heartfelt. You no, mean. I feel bad for Brittany. She, uh, listen. Four score and seven years ago. Well, had a rough time. Listen, I think it all started when she met you. It was all downhill from there. <laughs> She's like, what? Uh, in 1998? The way this guy has his shirt tucked into his jean shorts. I don't know. <laughs> kind of freaking I, me out. I never, well, I never what? had a. Uh, what? I never wore jean shorts. And uh, Faster, back me up. 
Did I there ever? There was a wear, jean shorts phase. There was not. I never owned jean shorts. There's photos of it somewhere. Jorts. Yes. No. Yes, you wore jorts. You're like John Cena. I never <laughs> had jorts. Jean shorts. And you, you tucked your shorts. shirt into it. <laughs> <laughs> what a Dorcas. Anyway, she apparently has like a lot of things to say, but she just had a book out. But what, what so? What, what, what else is beyond? What can't she say? Yeah. What is too offensive to share? <gasps> I found the video. No, those those are those are those jean are not, shorts. Those are those, those are Tommy. Hey, those, those are jeans. Those, those are, are black jeans. No, those are those are dark blue Tommy Hilfiger shorts. Look how you're standing. I found the video of Britney Spears on Jack Harris's show with oh, MJ and BJ. Hey this, y'all, and you're wearing black khaki shorts. I think no, those are black the, the, jean there, shorts. There's no such thing as black khaki. I'm the, wearing black... I'm wearing dark blue. I still have those shorts in the closet oh, from 1998. No, I don't. Look but, at Jack. All right, hang on That's a minute. Awesome. This is from 1998 oh. when when Jack used to do. Jack Harris used to do. Uh, what was it? Harrison ha- Company at noon thirty? Right, and it, it used to be at Bush Gardens. Yeah, sure the, was. The TV show was at Bush Gardens, and then it Here. went to the Brandon Town Center. All right, listen to this. <laughs> to bring InSync on the show today, but in bringing InSync, we have another very special guest whose record has just hit number 14 in the country. Welcome, 14. Brittany Spears! Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Here, Brittany walks out on stage with us. Brittany's a, uh, Brittany's a jive recording artist, and Brittany's one of the hottest young Yay. talents in the country right now. I remember the first time, Brittany, that you walked into my office and you played that video of yours. Yep. And, and I looked at it. I'm That's like, BJ. Wow, this girl is destined for big things. And I got to tell you, man, it's on thought? fire now for you. Thank you so much. That you, is so sweet. Do you know where Brittany started? Where she got her real exposure? With a couple of the guys from NSYNC, I might add, was on the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> really? Yeah, right? Well, I was told they were all working at some uh, McDonald's drive through <laughs> 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 Oh, look, look, at, look at that. Good. Look at that humor. Oh, I'm cutting up, that. baby. So, are you doing great nice. in your life right now? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. But the it's... music's on fire, and you are becoming a big superstar. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, BJ, your best of luck. Like 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 yeah, BJ's like in her face. Wow. Now, now Jack, Jack, I want to demonstrate just for a second here how rabid these NSYNC fans are. Where's Jennifer? Je- bring, let Jennifer up here. Oh, you got Jennifer's it. back here. Right, so this We're is, just going to watch so this. This is a live <laughs> clip from, from 1998. So is anybody else they covered in douche chills? But listen, <laughs> that's Britney Spears, and look how they just broomed her. All right, Jack, let's talk about NSYNC. And Britney's there like, uh, uh, I didn't know you talked like Hal Herman so, was back then, I'm Jack. Hey. <laughs> We're on stage with Britney Spears in 1998. Eight. Uh-huh. What does she do? What could be so offensive? No, like, you know what? I, it's funny you say that, Froggy, because I'm looking at this interview with you guys. Aside from BJ being very, very close to her, like a very so big pretty. close talker. Oh, he was a close wow. talker. BJ was in her face. He was in her face. Aside oh. from that, like that was the time of her life. Like people, they weren't abusing her. They were just like, hey, we want to get to know you. You're yeah. doing so great. Isn't it funny how we build him up on the ascent and just tear get your him payday down. candy bar breath out of my face? But <laughs> what my question is, like BJ, back up. I'm not a salt lick. <laughs> what is what is too offensive that Britney Spears can't share now? Oh my God, that, I know what it is. I got that, one. Wait a minute, that wasn't in her book. She's I mean, right, she, exactly. That was her opportunity, in, and she did lay a lot of it out. In her book that just came out last fall, she revealed that Justin Timberlake forced her to have an abortion. I mean, what's more juicy? That doesn't seem like the right word to use in this, but, but scandalous than what, that? What's more offensive? Anyway, so Britney Spears. All right, on to Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever the hell he is, Combs. Man, I'll tell you what. Puffy. It looks like knives are out for uh, Sean Diddy Combs. Here's a headline from the New York Post. Sean Diddy Combs has been untouchable for decades, but now people are out to take him down. Is this the unraveling? Is this the demise of Sean Diddy Combs? Hmm. He has a very questionable past that he's been able to control because of his power for a very long time, said Derek Parker, who was a detective in the NYPD rap intelligence unit. Uh, There's an rap yeah, intelligence unit yeah. at NYPD? Yep. Uh, it's known as the Hip Hop Cop. Seriously. Dude, you don't know nothing oh, about Hip Hop Cops? I know nothing about yep. Hip Hop. There's a whole documentary about it. They've been around for years. They covered the hip hop industry in the, uh, you know, back in the, when everybody was getting shot. Uh, and because of the Homeland Security swarmage of warrants being searched and a simultaneous uh, 
door knock and search warrant and uh, a tearing apart. Did you see some of the pictures? You know, they released some of the pictures from inside of Diddy's home where, you know, it was like tossed like a whole closet. All the drawers are open. They went through everything trying to gather evidence, which is apparently attached to some type of a sex trafficking charge against Sean Diddy Combs. And they tossed his places in Miami and in Beverly Hills. What? Did, oh, I can't say. Never mind. What? What? <laughs> never, hold, say, hold, say, hold, hold, never mind. I can't say it as clearly. I just or... I read something. Really, I can't remember where I read it this morning. You read yeah. what? Uh, I, can't, I messed up. No, just, 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 hold on. Is it? Is, is it? You, is it too foul for broadcast? Yes. Yeah, is that's Roxanne, it. Do you know what he's talking about, Rox? I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Never mind. Just move on. What? No, you now you now you piqued our curiosity. I was going to say something about this P Diddy thing and about his sons, and I was like, "Where did I read that? Did you read it on a message board? Probably a message board. Just how foul everything is, and it just stinks yes. like high heaven. And what? this is just a tip of the iceberg. How- so it's women, it's men. You have that former producer guy, that Rod Jones, Lil Rod, Lil Rod Jones. He claims that Diddy groped his genitals. Oh, who has it been? Fish has been doing that to me for years. Seriously. I would be flattered if Diddy would grope my genitals. Ew. Oh, Fess, don't make light of this. Fester, you're going to make light of this? Speaking solely for myself, Lil Rod. Then there's a story that Diddy told people to put a little toy remote control helicopter down some guy's pants. And what? Then, then, you know, you know, you know, that just sounds then, funny. And then turn it on. Uh, this is a blaze. Right, hey, 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 uh, I, I, I fly those right, things. Fester, Fester. Yes. Go, go to Google right now. All right. Go, go, go to Google. And type, go to Google. I'm getting there. All right. No, leave Pup, leave, Pup leave, Daddy. Just, just leave, uh, no, no. Uh, Toy uh, helicopter? No, do, do Sean Combs. Just do Sean Combs. All right. Sean Combs. Try to spell correctly. All right. Now, helicopter. Helicopter. Pants. Pants. P-A-N-T-S. Pants. And see if the story comes up. Yeah. Oh, listen. Resurface clip of Diddy telling kids to put toy... Hel- listen to this. All right. Click on that story. All right. Let me... I'm not making this up. All right. And I might be able to play some audio here. Uh, this is from uh, the Daily Mail. An old clip featuring Sean Diddy Combs has gone viral after internet sleuths pointed at inappropriate sexual innuendos on an episode of Nickelodeon's All That, where a a, a gooey white substance okay, was thrown. Right, right. Anyway, that, that was on the show. Listen, yeah, I remember the, that. The troubled rap mogul was at the height of fame when producer Dan Schneider tapped him for a guest role in 2002 in the clip. You know about Dan Schneider? Is he the guy who's in the role? Well, he's he's the guy who created all those Nickelodeon shows who was a creep the Really? Oh yeah. Have you heard? You heard about the documentary? You gotta see the documentary, bro. I finished it last night. Is it? Is it that crazy? It's not that crazy. Wait a minute. You coincidentally watched a documentary on Nickelodeon well, shows? MJ, yeah, he said well, that last week. Well, are I remember you, you saying that? Quiet on the set, bro. It is a right. are ginormous documentary. Right, MJ, are you living under a rock? Do you not know the biggest documentary in the country is an expose on Nickelodeon and all of the. Was, is it grooming and, yeah, and, and, and all the, and the creepy stuff? And creepy stuff. And Ariana Grande was on the I, show. I, and this is where's the documentary? There was feet fetishes. Is it on Netflix? It is on Max HBO Max. Is it? I didn't know I this. Know. Let me look at my phone. How do you not know it exists? You know right. everything. Listen, in the clip from 2002, two young actors are trying to wake up child star Shane Lyon by banging a pair of symbols. Right? Okay. Quiet on the set. The dark side of Nickelodeon's kids' TV is on HBO Max. When that didn't work, they poured a bucket of gooey sour milk on the young actor. The boys then asked themselves, what would P. Diddy do before turning to the rapper for advice? Tell you what, take this toy helicopter, Sean Combs responds, put it down his pants. The boys follow the suggestion and then turn on the toy helicopter with a remote provided by Combs Mm. while Mm. the little toy helicopter is down the kid's pants. All right, it's a scripted show. Yeah, this is a show. I thought it was real. He didn't didn't say this like like in in the backstage. Hey, y'all, let's put a Mm. helicopter down Rod's pants and see what goes down. This is a scripted show. Somebody else wrote this. He read his line. I don't hold Boo, that but that documentary is good. Anyway, uh, a lot of stuff coming out about Sean Combs. I'm shocked at this information. Including 
his alleged drug mule. Do you know about this? He had a mule? Literally, how far could that thing get with drugs? I mean, I mean four fun. legs and they're slow? They, they don't walk quickly. I'll tell you that fact. Have of all guys, the animals. Have you guys ever met him? I've never met him. Dude, R- I know him personally. No, you don't. <laughs> Rapper don't Diddy, his alleged drug mule was arrested at a Miami airport after federal agents raided Diddy's homes in Florida and California. Brendan Paul, 25 years old, was also arrested this week at Opalaka Airport after the feds intercepted a private plane that he was about to board with Diddy. He was booked on one count of possession of suspected cocaine, suspected marijuana edibles. Uh, Diddy's alleged drug mule uh, arrested. Diddy was spotted at the same airport earlier this week. Talking on the phone. That's where he was pacing back and forth after the the raid on his compound. The drugs were found inside Paul's travel bags, according to the arrest paperwork. He was arrested after tests confirmed that they were narcotics. Uh, Federal officers found the drugs in uh, his bag. We're working in conjunction with Homeland Security, who raided Diddy's homes and Border Patrol. Paul was the alleged drug mule in the Rodney Jones lawsuit. And the claim is, is that this, this guy, Paul, who's 25, who apparently had some kind of a college basketball career. It's like, he wasn't very successful though. Yeah. I don't, I don't, but he apparently was a college basketball player and he turns it to like Diddy's alleged mule for drugs and guns. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, they need a mule. It's a well, lot of college basketball so, players that uh, well, you need a job well, after basketball. Yeah, what was your major in college mm. that now you're Diddy's alleged drug and gun mule? Okay. Mule in 101. Listen, I'll tell you right now, that sounds like a great job <laughs> until everything goes to hell. <laughs> until everything goes to hell <laughs> in a head <laughs> basket. Have you, have you guys heard rumors? Oh, about- oh hey, hang on a sec. Yeah. He played for Syracuse. He was an orange man. Now, apparently, with the Coke, he's a white man. Uh, I don't get it. All right. So, uh, Brendan Paul. I mean, it would have been funny if you said he's going to wear an orange uniform in jail. He was he was an orange man. He played for Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse is now known as the orange. They don't identify as gender specific. I, I know. I I'm know. Saying. Uh, yeah. It's now politically incorrect to call them the orange men. Well, they don't have scurvy. Yeah. He appeared for Syracuse in a total of 16 games in the two seasons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't sound like the greatest of basketball players. He's a pretty good basketball player, but not great to sit on half the well, games he, on the bench. He played for Syracuse as a walk-on for two seasons, but then he transferred from Division I Syracuse to Division II Fairmont State. Ooh, Fairmont State. Wow, they're a powerhouse. But he's alleged to be P. Diddy, Sean Combs' drug and gun mule. And he was released on well, not a big bond, $2,500 bond. Hmm. But it appears that the P. Diddy world is coming down. A lot of folks now are piling on. Well, let me pile on. Oh, I got oh, something. Go, oh. go ahead. Oh, right. just a- pile on P. All right. Roxanne so, is piling on. Pile on P. I'm just giving, this is very, all factual and my opinion. Ooh. I met on, him wait, one wait, time. Wait, wait, wait. It's subjective and objective? Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> It's, it's factual it's, it's, and my opinion. There are facts and then my opinion. All right. You know when you meet someone and you literally make a snap judgment about them? Mm-hmm. Right? Don't Are we all guilty of that or or good at that? I should say it's a skill. Sort of like uh, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Yeah. yeah. That'd and, be a good okay. tagline for a deodorant. And I'm pretty good with my snap decisions. Well, right? hold on. A, a deodorant tagline like... Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. pH balance for a woman. Yeah, like, yeah, just right. like that. Go ahead, Rox. Wait, wait, tell me the tagline again. If you don't get a second chance to make a first impression, so oh, yeah. use sure so you don't smell like crap. Perfect. All right, so okay. back over to your your opinion yes. and your fact. Okay. Yes, so right. fact, I met him at a club in New York City. Into club? Into club. Dun, dun, in, dun, dun. I want to say 2006-ish uh-huh. around then. He now was that's big then. Yeah. And so it was, I think, and I want to think, I think it was a marquee, pretty sure, in New York City. And in like the VIP section, and I said hello, shook his hand, and my snap judgment, and this is the opinion part, secretive. 
up to, uh, up to something. And <laughs> hold on, I, I, I'm not. I, can you? You're like talking cryptically here. No, like, that's my snap judgment. I just so, like, when you meet someone for the first time. In my head, I was like, he seems secretive. That was my. That was <laughs> All right, Roxanne. So you meet a celebrity who essentially is a total stranger up until the time you meet him, and he doesn't share all his information with you? So you've okay. dubbed him secretive. You know, listen, listen. Okay. If it was like if he was a caricature, he would have been in the club reading a newspaper upside down, up to something. That's just, okay. thank, thank that you. was my snap judgment. Did, that was my vibe. When, when you shake right. someone's hand and have a five-second interaction with them, you take something away. My takeaway was, huh, lone wolf, secretive. What's he up to? He's obviously not a lone wolf because he has his own drug mule, <laughs> Lil Rod. He wasn't with anyone that night that Where's I saw. Where's Big Rod? Yeah, right? What? I can't get over how terrible a rap name that but is. Wrapping up on Sean P. Diddy's Puff. Puff, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, wrapping this up, though, apparently the victims are really coming out of the woodwork now. Since the big federal raid earlier this week... Alleged victims are talking a lot, according to the feds. So that's a story that, that popped out. Has Fonsworth Bentley come out yet? Uh, Remember him? Former extra... Hold on a sec. Former extra host and Sean Diddy Combs dancer, Tanika Ray, recalls a horrific story. She says, I just knew to avoid him at all costs. On Tuesday, two popular media personalities who covered Diddy for decades recalled... Past incidents involving the disgraced music mogul, former extra host Tanika Ray, She's who great. also was a backup dancer for Diddy in the 90s, posted on social media about an allegedly horrific experience that made her steer clear of Sean Diddy Combs for years. She wrote of her experience with Diddy, I knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising. So you have people with firsthand knowledge and a relationship business-wise in some cases with Diddy that are saying none of what's going on is surprising. So is this the demise of Diddy? Is he going down? Is he going to find himself uh, potentially in federal prison? You know what we should do is change his name from Diddy to He Did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, then uh, creepy footage of Justin Bieber and Diddy has resurfaced yeah. uh, when Bieber was 15 years old. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, a baby. Listen to this. Ugh. A baby face Justin Bieber is seen hanging out with Diddy in a resurfaced clip as the rapper brags about the 48 hours that they spent together. And how he can't disclose what they would be doing. A video clip of Diddy with young Justin Bieber has now popped up again uh, amid the whole sex trafficking investigation. In the footage, Diddy is seen standing alongside 15-year-old Justin as he tells viewers how he can't really disclose what they'll be doing as they spend 48 hours together. Right. Isn't it maybe that's why Justin didn't want to do the Super Bowl halftime show with... His other guy. Usher? Usher. Well, Usher's also come out. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. They're all tied together. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I don't want to get too late here. Hey, Andrew, let's pull the Justin Bieber audio and let's push the latest Usher audio. Usher just did the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And Justin Bieber refused to right. do it. And Justin Bieber was apparently rumored to be a special guest. So hey, we, we'll grab some audio here in just a few minutes. All right, we have a lot to get to uh, in the uh, 9 o'clock hour. Starts in just a few minutes uh, here on the MJ Morning Show. So we've got Sticks, Foreigner, and John Wade tickets to give away in just a matter of minutes. But if you look at the, the amount of stories that are coming out about Sean Diddy Combs. Hey, was he on the li list, the Epstein Island list? Yeah, was Sean he Combs? I don't think I ever heard that. Yeah, I gotta look at that. Yeah, don't start that rumor, Froggy. Oh, he but, just asked the what? question. I he mean, just asked the question. That actually would be a compliment compared to all the things Diddy's going through right what now. What are you talking about? Don't start that rumor. Uh, now, one other thing, and we'll try to find some of these audio bites and get them after the break in the next segment. But listen to this: an ex assistant. Ooh, this is this is rough. All right, I, I got to figure out how to get this on the air. 
an ex-assistant of Sean Diddy Combs claims that to him, women were either bleepable or non-bleepable. Hmm, what could that bleep mean? You tell us, Roxanne. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So is that how he categorized women? He degraded women in that fashion that the only what metric, the only uh, way to describe or to categorize a woman, whether he thought that they were doable or not doable. That's another way I can put it. Remember when someone who worked here years ago got fired because they made a list of who they'd like to do? Top to bottom of the females in the building. You know what? I heard about this, but this was <laughs> you weren't here yet. That was this a great was, guy. I love Keebler. This was <laughs> this was just before we got here. Love that guy. Oh, this is like some ins. You know what, Roxanne? You just opened up the the door yeah, on that. I, I, that's, I don't care. I, I'd okay. Hang on. That person's hang, gone. Management from I, then is gone. I'd hang on. There was a scandal here in the building. And this is before that we brought back the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. But there was a list that a guy made of all of the women in the building that he wanted to. Mm -hmm. And somehow the list got out. All right. Hold I on. I think he like, put it out. I, I don't think he was even quiet. I, 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 so, hang on. Tell us the whole story. I, I, I mean, from well, hang on. Him, yeah. After the break. This is a teaser. This is a teaser. All right. Right after the break, hold on, and uh, we got a lot to do. We got a solid hour to go. We've got the Sticks Foreigner John Wade tickets to give away coming up. Don't move. We're back in minutes here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105.
MSNBC has crabs. Hal Herman has the real news. Screw CNN. Hal Herman is the most trusted name in news. Fox News blows. For the facts, Hal Herman knows. Hal Herman is on your side. Your side. Ladies and gentlemen, it is confirmed. Hal Herman headlines tomorrow morning at about 8 o'clock here on the MJ Morning Show. Wait a minute. Yes. How are we going to do Hal Herman and the reenactment of the Fabio situation tomorrow? This is too much. Fester, are you really going to get a duck? <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Dump it! No, it's already out there. Oh. We, 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 I, we, I told him, so yeah, I didn't want to surprise you. But earlier in the week, Froggy said tomorrow we should acknowledge the 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary. Very special in, in a moment. So I contacted a poultry farm in Tampa <laughs> looking for a goose. and I saw five of them this morning flying I, over my truck. I, I, hang on a minute. So for those that don't know, tomorrow, the 29th of March... A historic day. 2024 is the 25th anniversary of Fabio being smashed in the face yes. with a goose while riding a new roller coaster at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg in Virginia. And I can guarantee you want to be a groundbreaking radio show? We will be the only radio show possibly on the planet covering such a uh, anniversary <laughs> so, as Fabio. Fester, you are going to some farm to pick up they didn't have a goose, so you're borrowing a duck? Well, I said, we're gonna, so we're going to write goose on the side of it. I said to him, I go, he answers the phone, right? Nice guy. And I was like, hey, <laughs> before I say anything, hey, this is going to sound crazy. I'm just telling you now. But, and I introduced myself, and I asked him if he had a goose. Eddie's Duck and Poultry Farm? This yeah. is the name? Really? This is right by the airport uh, in Tampa. Eddie's Duck and Poultry Farm. I didn't know this. I call them, and he's like, yeah. I don't have geese, but I have <laughs> Ducks. And I go, okay, how many ducks do you have? And he's like, how many do you need? How do you not have a goose when you have ducks? It goes together. It's a game. Oh, man. So you're going to borrow a duck? Now, no duck will be hurt in the making of this reenactment. But we are going to throw it at Fester's face. No, no we're throwing, you're Fabio. We're throwing it at your you're face. You're Fabio. How for, am I going to be Fabio? You're Fabio. It's not Fabio. It was my it's, idea. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, have to work it. Yeah. you. Oh, because it was my idea, I have to do it? And you got to get fake blood. You have a lot to do for You're going to get fake blood what, and put it all over the bird and what, throw it at my no, face? No, no, you can't put fake blood on the bird. Why? The bird can be untouched. Let's just I don't kill want, it. I don't want Peter climbing all up my butt, <laughs> all right? No, the the duck- We can't we're, just kill a, bird, uh, uh, a duck. I, no, no we, killing Froggy, animals doesn't you, play well no, in Tampa Radio. No, we're not. Why not? We're not doing it. Why don't you ask the, uh, de- <laughs> ask the degenerate about that? <laughs> Wait, right, okay, but- right, so, all right, so, all right, hey, hang on, listen, seriously, <clears throat> okay. l- listen. Okay. The duck is going to be Fester, you know what? We ought to just leave the live animal out of this. Can, Can I you, bring the no. go, go All get, right, how about how about I, the chickens? No, go get a decoy. Um I was gonna go, tell you go get <laughs> a go to, dicks. Go, go to go to do they oh, sell decoys yeah. at dicks? All right. Go to Bass Pro Shops or Dicks and get a duck decoy. No. And we'll throw that at Froggy's face. I don't want to mess with a live animal. Yeah. I, I don't want to I forgot all, about the history I, of live listen, animals. I don't wanna <laughs> I don't want any trouble. You know what? Call Eddie over at, what's Eddie's number? Give, call me, Eddie. give, me, give me Eddie's number. I'm going to call Eddie oh, over at Eddie's he Duck. He probably has the duck uh, all ready to go. Listen, listen, guys, go back a page. I had I've no got... idea there was a duck and poultry farm near the airport. Yes, Rox. Well, I know that ducks can become infested with salmonella, and they also spread bacteria to humans with their feathers or droppings. So I went to I... high school with salmonella. He's a good guy. <laughs> So do we want that? Do we want all those duck droppings around the studio? Please, we've had a monkey poop and pee all over a chair and then our news guy sat in it. I'll tell you that story later. Yeah, we had a we had a orangutan brought in. We had uh, this is years ago. I said, hey, Mm -hmm. listen. If you have an orangutan, can you bring it to the studio this morning? And somebody from like Why Mama brought in an orangutan into the studio. He, the, the orangutan peed all over Don Richards' 
<laughs> who he was filling in for Martin Giles. Oh, what a day to yeah. fill in. Martin okay. Giles was on vacation, our regular news guy on the old I MJ Fisher, morning shut show. Up. And Don Richards was filling in and the orangutan okay. peed all <laughs> over the seat. Don Richards comes in to do news and he sits Sorry. down in like a gallon of orangutan Covered pee. Covered in monkey pee. <laughs> all right. So MJ, on line 11, I have Taha. The guy that I spoke to at Eddie's Duck and Poultry Farm. Well, where the hell's Eddie? I want to speak to Eddie. Listen, he's the owner of the operation. Uh, oh, Eddie's is, the owner? I don't know his name, Eddie. Uh, Come on, talk to Taha. Uh, hey, uh, Taha. Yes. Hey, Taha, welcome to the MJ Morning Show on Q105. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good morning, everybody. All uh, right, good morning. So, all right, Fester says that you guys have been very accommodating in lending us a duck. However, you know... I, do I really want to mess around with a live animal? Because, you know, uh, we, we we want the animal to be untouched, unscathed, returned to you. But is this duck, like, scheduled to be, like, uh, at you know, some Chinese restaurant? <laughs> no. It's a, it's a live duck. Uh, I mean, once the, when, when you guys come, I'll put it in a box, and you guys could take it. I mean, it's not dangerous. It's not scary. He won't run away. <laughs> Is he scared of us, is the question. Well, I, I just don't want to get PETA up, up all and through my kitchen, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I'm i just thinking that, yeah, Tampa Bay Radio doesn't have a good history with live animals. So, yeah. you know, nothing on our show. Can but, we kill the duck? Froggy. What are you uh, saying? What is, what is, what is, what is, what is well, Froggy, what is wrong what, with what's you? What's with you? I don't, I, I'm just Stop. asking. I don't know. Stop going down that line right. of questioning, uh, jackass. <laughs> Taha, Taha, yeah. Yeah. your ducks, what are they bred for? My ducks. Uh, the the duck I have is a is a regular duck. <laughs> is this guy it's, for real? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, is it's, uh, it's not the ones that the wild duck. It's a. Okay. Uh, right, so Taha, ta- ta- what is the duck used for? Are, are these ducks used for food? <laughs> yeah, you can use them. Uh, you could roast it. Like the Chinese, <laughs> they do it. <laughs> so so uh, are, the, are these ducks used for Peking duck? The, there's uh, this. There's different ducks. There's the Peking duck, and this this is the the Muscovy. Oh, Darwin. So uh, are the Muscovy ducks like the ones that are like kind of darker that I see around lakes and like apartment communities around town? Those are the drakes. Uh, oh. All right, okay. So the drakes and the mallards. Those are the ones I got to chase out of my swimming pool, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. All right. All right. So listen, uh, Taha, is there an Eddie, or are you you're the are you the owner? Yeah, that's me. Oh, so I'm you're so who the hell's Eddie? Oh, oh, you oh Taha, you bought it from Eddie. Yes, that's correct. What happened to Eddie? I mean, Eddie, he he flew back to Dominica. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, MJ, when I tell you, I well, talked. I'm to- glad he didn't go to Haiti, man, because that that's a big problem <laughs> right now. Disaster, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I talked to I talked to Taha a couple of days ago, yeah. and he said he would give us two ducks. Yeah, but what give us? I, I know, and that's no. like I don't need two ducks. Two to days give it to before me. Easter. Right? All right, listen, <laughs> uh, look, I'm thinking. Hey, Taha, let me tell you what we're thinking. I don't want Fester to have to deal with live animals. I don't want anything because with Fester, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yes, that's true. So uh, Ed, Eddie or Taha, I'm thinking that we might pass on the ducks. Oh. But but hold on. But thank you profusely for the offer. And I think we're just going to go to Dick's or to uh, Bass Pro Shops and get a duck decoy to throw into Froggy's face. <laughs> no problem. Hey, can can I bring my kids by to play with your chickens and ducks? Yeah. All right, right. Uh, there you that go. That sounds awesome. You want to go, right. Rock? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh, hey, Rock, duck, duck, goose. Hey, uh, Taha, if you don't know about the MJ Morning Show, we're on 104.7 FM, okay? No problem. All right, Taha, thank you for thank your cooperation. You. Thank you. I'll be in touch, Taha. Have a great Taha. day, guys. Thank uh, you, too. You, too. See, he's, he's the coolest guy. He has yeah, his oh, duck yeah. farm. Yeah, he is In cool. Tampa, right We got to get one and train it to quack at the top of every hour. <laughs> Dude. Quack, quack. It's 9 o'clock. Just have quack, him sit here. What is it? What if we replace like the upcoming Cash Kitty with like the <laughs> Cash Duck, and we have like a live duck in the studio? <laughs> oh, so thanks for ruining the bit, man. Good job, MJ. I'm not. What? Getting, I'm not spending I, I, eighty I, bucks on a decoy. Froggy, I, you're in charge of no, all no, of it. No, no, I'm out. I'm not doing it. What I'm not doing do? it. How's that gonna be funny? How's it gonna There's be? There's nothing now? to do now. I'm gonna we, throw a wooden we, duck at Froggy. We need to. There's right. nothing to do. Fester, can you? Okay, I'll tell you what. what. Go get one out of the pond back Hey, there. let me call Taha back. Hang on a minute. Can, can Taha bring the duck to the studio tomorrow morning? I'll pick him up tonight. No, I don't want you to have it'll, it'll I don't it'll want, not go well I, in your house. I don't want you to have custody of a duck. He's not going to be in my house. <laughs> hang on a minute. Stop, just stop. Let me get time to a tree outside. What? 
Let me get Taha back on the phone. Did what you, you going to put it in the garage? Eight, three, eight, uh, Roxanne, tie him to a tree outside. That's great. It's raining. The duck would love that. Hang on. Let me get Taha <laughs> back like on the water. phone. Your pool is green. Right, Fester, get Taha back on the phone. All right. Hold All right. On. I need Taha to bring the duck in tomorrow and then take the duck away. I can't have you ducking it up. Yeah. Hey, what the duck? Yeah, exactly. Oh. All right, you got Taha back? Again from the radio station. All right. Can we talk to you uh, one more time? Uh, we have get question. Taha back on the phone. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, on. Here's, All right. this is what we hold need on, to hold do. On. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, hey, Taha, are you back with us? Yeah. All right, I just thought of a, a compromise. All right, for the Fabio reenactment of the 25th anniversary of Fabio getting smashed in the face with poultry at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, bloodying his whole thing. Can you come to the studio tomorrow? I don't want Fester to pick up a duck this afternoon, have it at his house, and then have to bring it back. Taha, are you able to come to our station live on the air tomorrow morning with the duck for the reenactment and then take the duck back with you? Um... Oh, gee, this like, doesn't well, sound good. He has a business to run uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. I've got some hesitation here. Well, I, what time you guys open? Uh, we're open yeah, early. We, yeah, we open the doors at 6 a.m., baby. So, like, if you got here, like, it's... Around there, maybe, yeah. What, what if you got here... Like, um, what if you got here, like, it's 7.45 and you're out of here by 8.15? No, 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 no. Let's do, let's do 7.30. All right, what what if you get here at 7.15 and I get you out of here by 7.40? Does that work? Yeah. Uh, text me the address. All right. Uh, 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 Fester will call you up later on. So, Taha, I just don't want Fester anywhere near handling ducks. So, if you could just, you could bring a duck live tomorrow morning. Wait, what time does a duck get up? You're not going to ask for time? <laughs> well, I mean. Hey, uh, I'll, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to the duck, and uh, I'll talk to him about the meeting. He'll be happy. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. We need a big duck. All right, uh, so Taha, Fester will call you after the show, and we'll have you live in the studio tomorrow morning with your duck. Okay. All right, so the, All right. the name of your company is Eddie's Duck and Poultry Farm, and do you sell to private people, or do you just sell to restaurants? I don't understand. Well, it's, it, used to, it used to call Eddie Ducks and, and Chickens, but now it's Tampa Live Poultry. We, we sell to the community. All right, very good. Wants, you know, live chicken or duck, you want them as pets. You can have them as pets. Uh, you want me to process them and <laughs> you want them for lunch. You can have them for you lunch. Can do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, Taha, we'll see you tomorrow. Already. See All right. you guys. I'll All right. talk to you later, Taha. Right. Bye, Taha. Right. See, That's the you. compromise. I just couldn't have you handling a duck. Why does he trust? He has two kids. Right. I could have put him in the back of my Cadillac. Listen, Fester's wife doesn't trust him with his kids. No, okay. She doesn't. She doesn't. That's right. true. All right, so all right, this will work out. Uh, who's going to get the fake blood? Because you, Froggy, you've got to have like blood, sh- and you got to wear a, a shirt. We got to you. You got to find like a nice button-down shirt because Roxanne, I think. Do you have a blonde wig? Uh, I have a red wig. Oh, you need to get a Fabio wig. Listen, I am the chief executive. Fester, get a wig. I am the executive officer. No, you're of- not doing nothing I'm now. I'm the duck coordinator. Listen to me. You were in charge of all of the facets. All right. Well, come on. We, no. Eddie or, or Taha's bringing in the duck. You've done right. nothing, but right. you're, 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 so, you're not doing ducking nothing. Right. I've done I, everything I, so I, far. I, I need, listen, I need you to get the Fabio wig. Thank you. And the blood. Thank how? you. How? <laughs> you get the, how? Hey, how go about we just party city fresh? Party city's yeah. right down the street. Go, go, go to the pick show. it up. Just why, you. Why, why don't we just get ketchup? MJ, tell him to do it. This is... Fester, come on. You've always okay. been the prop coordinator on the MJ Morning Show. This is Froggy's terrible idea. So I get you a large wig, the Sam's Club size barrel of ketchup. No, no. no just fake get blood. Get stage blood. Get well, fake blood. What if it gets in the duck's mouth? I want the duck it's to eat ketchup. It's get in the duck's mouth. Don't you ruin say? this right. bit. Right. You're ruining it, you sap. Hal Herman better be funny as hell tomorrow. The All ducks right. open up for Hal Herman. I like that. Hal so, Herman's not funny. Right. 7.30 tomorrow morning, Fabio smashed in the face. With waterfowl live on the MJ Morning Show. I'm just going to throw a duck at Froggy? Is that thing going to be quacking? I want to hear it quack. It's a duck. <laughs> Are you going to be quacking is a better quack. I wish I never brought it up. <laughs> I have no idea. Why did... Oh, Michelle says it does not sound like a good bit. <laughs> she just... Michelle! Oh, Michelle! <laughs> you wouldn't know a good bit if it bit you. Wait. Well, what the heck? You know a good bite. It's don't bite. Uh, calling Michelle now. No other show in America's doing this. Michelle- what do you want to do? War of the Roses. <laughs> uh, right, Michelle's trying to wave us off of this for some reason. What if we gave away ducks? Well, I just read your text. You don't think it sounds like a good bit? Nicole's distraught. What? what? 
Chloe is distraught. Cl- why, why is Chloe? Why, why is Chloe distraught? She said that you're getting a duck to reenact the Fabio thing. It's an it's an it's an actor's portrayal. It's yes. not we're not literally hurting a duck. Yeah, the duck is not going to be hurt, but we need a duck. She said the duck is not going to be hurt. Huh? Yeah, put, put, put Chloe baby. on the phone. She, she didn't put, even know who Fabio was, so I, put, I had to explain that whole thing to her. Uh, hold on, put Chloe on the phone. I can't. I'm on headphones. I mean, this happened uh, before Chloe walking was even now. born. We're walking now. Oh, you're walking. Okay. In the rain. Right. Walking in the rain and the snow okay, and there's that, nowhere right. to go and you Goodbye. feel like a Michelle. part of you is dying. Michelle, yeah. you, do, do you know what else would love to walk in the rain? A duck. A duck. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Michelle. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. It's not funny. It's not funny what happened to that poor duck. That, it was a goose. It was hilarious. Yeah. This this is a reenactment, no. not literally her. Don't think about the duck or the goose. Think about Fabio and his <laughs> broken nose. Do you not know no. theater? Right, uh, What's the matter with you two? Everybody's <laughs> sapping the energy out of this. You know what? I'm not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Screw this. You know what? This thing's this thing bites on ice. It's your idea. Uh, I hate it. It stinks. Uh, 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 we're gonna do it tomorrow morning. Hey, I just looked at Chloe's text. Uh, not about yeah. the duck, but Chloe texted me at eight forty nine. Mom sang your wake up jingle to wake me up this morning. Uh, oh, I did. Hold on. Did you really go into Chloe's room? Yeah. And sing the song. I sang the first, like, two lines, barely. All right, here we and go. I sing it, and she started laughing. Time to get up, get out of bed. Little radio genius climb into your head. Get a totally unpredictable start to your day. Did you stop there? Get your daily books. Uh, MJ, morning show. show. MJ, let's go. go. From, From six, six to ten, ten with this crazy game. game. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, insanity. So you just you just saying time to get up, get out of bed. Uh huh. And then I I kind of like faltered a little bit because I was trying to like you know nudge her. And then she rolled over and said, "Let a radio genius climb into your head." I go, <laughs> "Oh my god, what was doing?" <laughs> All right, bye, Michelle. Okay, bye. Bye. Spins it round and round. Everybody's getting down to the Yankee Morning Show. Morning Show got promotions and what are you doing? The death metal version? Yankee Morning Show. The Yankee Morning Show. What are you doing? The death metal version over there? I watched a, I watched a Lip Biscuit concert last night. To the Yankee Morning Show. Go. Wow. Man, that song rocks. We got a lot to do here. All right, so I'm looking forward to the Fabio reenactment tomorrow. Now, uh, Andrew, did you get the audio bites we wanted? Just a little follow-up on the whole Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Combs. All right, right, you found the Bieber stuff. All right, this, if you're uh, just tuning in, we were speaking about uh, the whole uh, Sean Diddy Combs deal, and a lot of folks in the industry thinks that this is going to bring Diddy down, that, that Diddy is done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here is... This is Bieber and Diddy, and this has resurfaced. Justin Bieber is 15 years old. And, of course, you got Diddy that apparently is part of this whole sex trafficking investigation. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, oh, when, God. you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, He's with me, so um, oh boy! And, yeah, and, and we Dude, go, go. sick. When okay. Justin Bieber was fifteen, oh, crazy, I'm going crazy, crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next forty-eight hours? Forty-eight hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go ahead. Let's go get some girls. Man, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I was reading. That's not what I was thinking, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading girls. <laughs> the, listen to this. The New York Post has a headline right now. 
50 Cent's ex accused of being Sean Diddy Combs' alleged sex worker in lawsuit. That's the new headline, right? It just seems... Wait, it, say, say it again. 50 Cent's ex? 50 Cent's ex accused of being Sean Diddy Combs' alleged sex worker in lawsuit. Mm. She was allegedly one of three women the rapper paid monthly to perform sex work for him. Right. So this, uh, you know, everything's coming out of the woodwork now. And there's a apparently a sex trafficking investigation involving Diddy. Then you have Usher. A couple of things here. Then you have Usher who was on with Howard Stern at some point. Andrew, do you know when Usher was on with Stern? Do we know the time frame of this? All right, so listen to this. This is Usher speaking about Diddy. What were you I seeing? went there to see the lifestyle, right? And, and I saw it, and it was, and it was. <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. There were very curious things taking place, uh-huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh-huh. Wow. What? what do That's you mean cryptic? by that? Some very interesting things going on that he didn't necessarily understand. Hmm. Two of yeah, the, the singer who... was 13 years old when he oh. went to Diddy's house. A lot of things a 13-year-old doesn't understand. Usher figured it out. And that was from 2016, apparently. Listen, we're hearing from sources that a lot of folks in the industry and a lot of celebrities are wondering why it took so long for the potential demise of Diddy. So I see headlines calling Diddy the rap Epstein. Mm. Really? Is he, MJ, yeah. this is a real... Oh, Rapstein. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, good one. Do you think this is worse than what Michael Jackson went through and all that? Uh, not yet. Yeah, so far, no. no. So far, no, exactly. Michael Jackson had a tr- public yeah. trial. And then Torre, he's like the music writer Torre. He interviewed, uh, or he was interviewed, and... I, uh, uh, this is an intern allegation story. So Torre was on MSNBC. I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay, I know this man well enough to call him and say, "Hey, I need a favor." Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, "Hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern." Yeah. And I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? And he wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, yeah. they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me. Or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. That's weird. Dude, how much of this stuff is going on? Weinstein, Epstein, <laughs> uh, Puff Daddy, R. Kelly. Puffstein. What yeah. is happening? Yeah. What, can you... Uh, Peastein. Pe- did people oh. make it in Hollywood and not have to do this? That sounds too close to Peastein. Uh, All right. Anyway. All uh, and, and Roxanne, we didn't even get to your little... Uh, Sexcapades here in the studio. Okay, well, whoa, can whoa, you whoa. please rephrase that? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Me. You have, right. there, there, there's no Roxanne sexcapades uh, yeah, in the studio. The, well, this is a well. It's, it's not rumor. It's, it has nothing it, to do with me. It, it well, happened. I was on the list. But. Right. Oh, you were on the list. Oh yeah. Of course the, she was. the person wanted to have uh, relations with you. I mean, you were on the doable. You were on the list. Hold on. Hold on. What's the next words out of your mouth? Uh, were you, you going to say, I mean, come on? Is that no, what I, I was just going to say, I, I mean, I don't even I, know how to answer that. I apologize if uh, you were expecting us to get to this sooner, but the whole Fabio Duck reenactment deal, that uh, obviously consumes some space. So Roxanne has an internal radio station dirt story. Uh, honestly, I think Froggy probably knows it better than I do because you knew the guy better. Uh, well, I know, then both of you guys, is, is, hold, okay. hold on to that thought. When we get back, I, I know we were supposed to do it earlier in this segment, but we just it got, we, it got away from us. So there's a, a story that happened. This is an HR nightmare. Wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, yeah. All right, that happened here in our radio building before the MJ Morning Show came back in October of 2020. All right, hold on. Got a lot of loose ends we got to get to. A long-loaded last segment of the show is next. Also, Sticks, Foreigner, and John Wade tickets. I'll give those away right now. Caller number 25, 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. Caller 25 right now. Good luck from the MJ Morning Show. Now, Easter is this...
Let's go. All right, the final segment on a Thursday of the MJ Morning Show on Q105. MJ and the crew, well, it's just Roxanne and me in studio. Fester and Froggy have not returned from the break. So tomorrow's going to be a very busy day. The Fabio 25th anniversary smashed in the face with a poultry reenactment on the program. Froggy will play the part of Fabio. Froggy's got the nose, I'll tell you that. I don't know. Does Fabio have a big nose? I think he does, yeah. I think All right, he so does. Uh, yeah, he... Froggy's going to don a long, flowing blonde wig. <laughs> I'm excited about this. All right, so in the final chunk of the show, a lot of ground to cover, a lot of little loose ends we'll get to. Uh, Roxanne, so you brought this up. Yeah. You you brought this up. No one brought... You brought this up. Yeah, and, am I under oath? Yeah, I brought it up. it was an incident that happened... At the radio station, and what precipitate? We were talking about uh, P. Because, Diddy, yeah, right? because you were reading a quote by P. Diddy, and he used to categorize women as as uh, doable or not doable. Yeah, basically. So, yeah, uh, employees mm-hmm. of Diddy or one particular employee said that, and this is horrific. This is terrible. That Sean Diddy Combs had two categories for women, either. Doable or not? I mean, this is terrible. It's all it's you know, believable or not believable. That's that's awful. And then Roxanne, you brought up that there was a former employee. Here. Was it a yes. D, was it a DJ? Yes, a DJ. A DJ here made a list of the women in our building. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. listen, the DJ was fired. He yes. was he was fired. But I mean, what year was this? 
Oh, my goodness. We got here in October of 2020 when we relaunched the MJ Morning Show. I can tell you exactly when it was because I I think I was pregnant at the time or I had... Yeah, I think I was pregnant. So it was 2019? Yes, it was 2019. All right, so just before COVID. Yes. All right, in, in 2019, who makes a list? I mean, when HR is a part of like every company, in this day and age, the, the whole Me Too generation, that was all happening, you know, Me Too back from what, 2015, 2016, 20, mm-hmm. who makes a list? What man makes a list that ends up getting circulated in the radio station of women that work here that he would like to uh, hook up with? Yeah, I, I don't know. But How I, did the list get out? I don't know, but I remember someone, I'm trying to remember who brought it up to me. Another woman did. And she's like, did you know there's a list uh, that that's going around that ranks women in this organization is who who is they would like to. Oh, so there was like, the it was a list yeah. like, like who was number one, who was yeah. number two? Yeah, Froggy, I can't remember. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah and, it was like that. It was and, ranking. And you were on the list? Yes. What number were you? I mean, that that's so rude because there's no good way for me to answer that question. No, no. Did you, did you ever see the list mm. so you knew where you were on the list? Hold on. You're saying I'm rude? No, no. Well, oh. I'm saying to, to, to even talk, it's rude for me to like talk. There's no win-win for me to talk about. Yeah. Well, you I brought mean, it up. No, there's no win-win oh. for me to say where I was on the list. <clears throat> oh. Did you ever see the actual list? No, I just oh. heard about it. Uh, Froggy, now so you don't know. You, now a lot Do of I folks, kn- a lot of folks don't know this, but, <laughs> but you weren't here yet, Froggy. Uh. Before you came back with us to join the MJ Morning Show again, mm-hmm. you had done some part-time weekend work here, right? Yeah, I was on the country station just for fun, and I knew the guy. He was. I was. We were on the station. I was on the same station as him, and he was a nut bar. <laughs> Wasn't he caught? Doing other things in this building? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But I, you know what the funny thing is? I never Hold saw on. him. I, I heard a story that, and I don't know if this is true. It is. Now, I heard he was shorter than me. Yes. And that he climbed a <laughs> six foot one inch female salesperson okay, mountain. That might be a little... Is, is Graphic. That, is is that true? I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. Is, uh, it's quite a <laughs> good for him. It's quite a tale. Good for her. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Jack I, and the Beanstalk. <laughs> I remember when this. It's such. A, uh, let me well, give you from the women's perspective. Well, I, please. It's such an awkward, awkward thing, right? Yeah. Because if you're high on the list, you feel weird because that means he wants to do it with you. There should be right? no list. I'm uh, a, of course. I, I'm a man, and I'm appalled. Yes. I'm appalled that somebody would have a list, especially yes. in this day and age, knowing about Me Too, uh, you know, it really after the whole Clarence Thomas, uh, what, what was... Uh, Clarence Thomas? I mean, this, That's some old school yes, stuff uh-huh. right there. This, this goes On back the soda to cans uh, Anita, what, what, Anita, Anita Hill. Hill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to the 90s. I mean, there was a whole... That's some old yeah. school... The, really, HR departments really started blossoming after the whole... Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas, yeah. that whole deal back in like 1991. I mean, who? I'm I'm appalled that a guy would make a list in this yeah. day and age. That's it's terrible. It's very awkward. It's very like I think women do this when they feel sexually offended. You, I think you make jokes and you try to like just dismiss it or whatever. And and really, it's like you're you're disgusted, but you don't want to throw a fit about it and seem weird. So I remember I was talking to it about about it with one of my male employees and and I was like, did you know or not employees, but actually bosses, Co- co-workers or bosses, bosses. Okay, right. So it, it had already like it, they all knew about it. But I was like, God, this is this is weird. You know, why? Why would someone do that? That's that it's not appropriate. And then completely. And then, yeah. Absolute, and then I was absolute. like, I was like, you know, you make jokes about it, though. So you're like, what joke did you make? I think I said something like, well. I'm really ha- honored to be so high on the list when I've been pregnant for two years, basically oh, you around know here. Where you were. Oh, oh, you do you know where you were. Now, is this guy still in radio? Does I don't know. You're lucky I wasn't working here at the time because I would have been top of the list. <laughs> yeah, I sure. offer something for everyone. He, nice, he was a nice guy. But yeah. it's just it's nice weird. guy with a list like oh, that. He was just like he was like a frat kit boy. Oh yeah. Man. Listen, but it just is hey, like frat hmm. attitude doesn't work. Yeah, he had a frat hey, attitude. Guess what? This is not four thousand two Gandhi in nineteen eighty nine. Okay, he had a frat hmm. attitude going big time. I don't think I ever. I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. I never saw him. I never. Oh yeah, you could. He'd be the littlest guy. (laughs) (laughs) All right, moving along. Looks like Taylor Swift's dad is not going to jail. 
I mean, there were chants of lock him up. Yeah, lock, lock him, him up. up. It was lock. Australian. So lock him up. How do they say it in Australia, Froggy? Yeah. Taylor, lock him up. Shut up. Taylor Swift's dad is not going to face charges over roughing up that photographer down under. Yep. Uh, Australian police, they've conducted an investigation following the report of an assault back on February 27th at Neutral Bay Wharf in Sydney. And they've decided that no charges will be pressed against Taylor Swift's dad. So he's not going to end up in a notorious Midnight Express-like Australian prison. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I guess he's out of the woods. Whoopi Goldberg freaked out on an audience member. Did you hear about this? Whoopi Dude, she's Gold- becoming unhinged. She's not much on my radar anymore. Yeah, so the view on... <laughs> Was AD- she on it before all the time? At one point, during, like, the comedy shows <laughs> during in the Sister Act. Ghost, <laughs> Ghost, yeah. <laughs> With Robin Williams. Whoopi Goldberg, during The View yesterday, she freaks out because there's a guy in the audience that's, like, holding up his phone and videoing, recording the show while they're live. And uh, one of the things is that when you go into the view audience, and this is the case in in most uh, recordings, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, protocol is that you turn your phone off. Right. I'm guessing some places probably even collect your phone. Yeah. You got to put it in a bin or something or in a locker or a bag or whatever. But I guess on the view, they allow you to keep your phone, but they, they tell you turn your phone off or put your phone on silent. Do not take your phone out. Do not record or take pictures. And some guy in the audience kept doing it. And... How did you talk like this now? Whoopi Goldberg, they're in the middle of talking about uh, some, uh, some political deal. They might have been talking about Trump or whatever. So they're, they're talking politics. And Whoopi Goldberg gets up and, like, walks toward the guy in the audience and starts pointing at the guy. Listen to the audio. You know, I will say this, and I think it'll surprise people, um, the fact hold that on, his sir, bond... Hold on. Sir. What's I have to I have to stop you with the camera, because I can see you. So do me a favor. Don't pull it out again. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. What was he doing? Recording. Oh. Um... So, as I was saying, you know, I think this will surprise people, but... Um, I'll tell you what, when Taha comes in tomorrow with his duck, right. he better leave that camera mm-hmm. phone in his pocket. <laughs> sir, put the put the camera away, sir. No put, recording in here. Put your ducking camera put away. Put relax, Whoopi. So, they're like live. Isn't The View live? I thought so. I no, think The View is live, yeah. and she gets up and tells the... Where are the ushers? Where are, like, the... Where are the the guards in the audience or whatever? I mean, that has to be something they address with the audience before. They do. I just said that. that They they tell them, turn your phone off, turn your phone on. on I already said that. I know, but we don't want this riveting conversation getting out. (laughs) Stop making a TikTok (laughs) out of it. But wait a minute. It's live on. So. Why? Doesn't make sense. But why did it freak her out if it's yes. already happening live? It's not like there's some secret taping where they're trying to hold the results back until the show airs in the fall. Oh. You know, you have to sign a, a no a non disclosure agreement. It's it's a live show, so I don't know why Whoopi Goldberg freaked out. I'm tired of her. That doesn't that doesn't make much sense for me. All right, anything? Oh, you know what? Let's recognize uh, Rob Gronkowski. What do you do? I love him. Rob R- Gronkowski spent time and went to the VA here in Tampa and, and visited with folks Aww. yesterday. That's cool. It was a very nice thing to do. See, Travis Kelsey, what real tight ends do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer Rob Gronkowski, the Gronk. Ugh. Gronk went to the VA, went to the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital on Bruce B. Downs and showed his support to those in the VA that have served our country. So I think that was a very nice thing. So uh, from the bottom of my heart to Mr. Gronkowski, to Gronk, thank you for visiting the veterans. Beautiful. I appreciate it. No, it's a very, very nice thing to do. Was he there part of like a USAA publicity thing? Or was he there of his own free will? No, this had nothing to do with you. I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, a way to make it be a little bit faster. You know, USAA USAA commercials. This, this had nothing to do with the, the, the USAA commercials he does. He Leave it to USAA faster. serves veterans? He's there? No, he's v- visiting the... V- a very nice thing to do. So thank you to Gronk for stopping by and showing his support for veterans at the uh, the VA here in Tampa. All right, we got to roll, folks. 
going to be a busy day tomorrow. About 7.30, we'll do the reenactment of the 25th anniversary of Fabio getting hit in the face with uh, waterfowl uh, yeah. while at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Happy Fabio Wo- uh, Goose Eve. You, you got to get the right wig, Fester, man. The, the wig is going to make it. is going to make it. Don't blow the, it. The wig is going to make it. The exactly. The duck is going to make it. Well, listen, it's the duck and the wig, but Froggy's got to have a Fabio wig. What Folks, time is Taco in? Uh, 7.30. And I got to wear an open white shirt. Oh, yeah. With, you, with you chest hair, your own shirt. Oh, you need yeah, you need to dye your chest hairs, Fabio Blonde. Oh, uh, crap! It's already what do, you do they sell chest hair dye? Uh, uh, we gotta go, yeah. folks. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the MJ Morning Show Friday edition on Q105. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm MJ at MJMorningShow.com on Instagram. My DMs are open. I'm certified MJ Radio. We'll see you tomorrow, and let's be careful out there. Ah!